on top of that JPEG. Not the file, the podcast. Art, pop culture, movies, and stuff. You ever wonder if other people think like you do? You ever wonder how other artists create things? How do you make a living as an artist? How do you get into the full state of making art? How do you make money at all? Humans are weird, but artists are too. Do you ever wonder how a tattoo artist, a teacher, and a TikToker make it in the art world? Why is sometimes art so easy and yet sometimes so hard? Like, why do we make awesome art and think no one will like it? Untitled Thought JPEG, real artists, real combos about the world of art and beyond. Like, way beyond. Untitled Thought JPEG, experience it on Spotify, YouTube, and anywhere you listen to your favorite podcast. Don't rename the file, just follow the podcast. Untitled.jpg podcast. Yep, we get it. Hello, everyone. This is the Untitled.jpg podcast where we talk about art, movies, and anything that comes to mind. So for this episode, we actually have Devon Rodriguez. Um, so if you know Devon, he actually got famous off his subway drawings during the pandemic. He was posting them on TikTok and got millions of followers through that and went super viral. We get into how that's been going and how his life has changed with these new opportunities. We get insight on how to use social media to your advantage as an artist, as well as just catching up and cracking jokes along the way. We also had Craig Franco on and it was just so much fun throughout the whole podcast. It was really great to have both of these guys on. So please let me know what you think about the podcast. Don't forget that we do have new merch on the website at albercoladoart.com. Support the show so we can keep this going and just talk to amazing creative people about their life and what they're doing now. All right, everyone. This is it for me. Enjoy the show. Yeah, yeah, no, like, of course. <laughs> I mean, I've heard it before. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we are here with Devon and my boy Craig. You know, I'm not your boy. I'm back. Nah, you're not my boy I'm not yet. your boy. <laughs> <laughs> so... This is a long time coming. We've talked about doing this for a while now, and we're finally here in this nice ass place. Um, so let's start by introducing yourself. Like, who's Devon Rodriguez? What are you doing right now? Um, thanks for having me. My name is Devon. Um, I'm an artist from the Bronx, um, and I, I don't know. I draw people on the subway. I make TikToks, and um, I make content. Yeah, that's all. You make contact. Yeah. So, I mean, how did you start out doing that? Because I've heard your, your stuff in, like, other podcasts about, like, how you started out and everything. But, like, what why was art so important to you? Um, I just always loved to draw all my life. It was never, like, a choice. It was just I always found myself drawing on all of my notebooks. Like, my teachers would get mad because um, the whole notebook would be, like, every space would be covered. And, um. It was just something I always loved to do, and uh, yeah. All, all drawing but no work, huh? Half work, <laughs> half drawing. I feel that. So I guess it was always something like you always knew then. Yeah, yeah. I always knew yeah. I wanted to be an artist. Whenever teachers would ask me, like, what do you want to do? I, I, would, I would always say I'm going to be an artist, and that's it. I didn't know anything else. I still don't know how to do anything else, so. Yeah, I mean, like, cause when I was in school, I was just thinking about, like, because I was in all these AP classes and everything, and I didn't see art as a career because I didn't know how to make money out of it until I had my senior year of, like, art class with my art teacher. And she's really the one that convinced me about it and, like, all the possibilities, and she actually taught me about illustration. Because when I thought about art when I was younger, I thought of just, like, you know, gallery shows, like abstract yeah. paintings, mm -hmm. you know, like, all that kind of stuff, so... I always knew that you you needed to know somebody to get into that, but I didn't know that you could commercialize it with like magazines and all that, and that's what got me into it. I mean, I always drew, um, and then when I got into college and I saw how far behind I was from everybody, I was like, all right, this is serious business. It's time to get into it. So I know you went to college. That's where we met with uh, Craig and you. Um, can you like elaborate more on that yeah um about the career thing i got very lucky with not knowing that it was like i never knew the starving artist concept until until i was too late in it you know like yeah. i didn't even know that i just thought like growing up like artists are famous they make money you know um so that didn't like 
deter me from it. Um, but yeah, with the college thing, um, I just figured it was something I should do. But once I got into it, I was like, eh, I don't know. I, like I'd rather, I wanted to take another route, which was like social media and like try to make it on my own. Um, so I was only in it like a year. Yeah, so how did you know early on that social media was going to be the way? Um, So I was like on Instagram all throughout high school. It's funny because Craig is the one that told me to get on Instagram. And uh, he always told me like we, we um, like I was like very like pure, like just about drawing and um, anti Instagram. Yeah, I was anti Instagram. And then uh, me and Craig were like drawing together. And he's like, yo, you should put your drawings on Instagram. And I was like, nah, I don't really want to like, you know, like I didn't care to like show people. I was just like, I just want to draw. And then um, one day I gave in. And I never looked back. <laughs> Wait, so you really, so you were just drawing to draw? And yeah, I was just not drawing showing to draw. anybody? Yeah, no, I didn't really. Care I think for he that. was on Facebook, but you had yeah, to be yeah, his I was friend. On yeah, yeah. So Even was, then, like. Yeah. I feel like as an artist, that's the main goal is to get it in front of as many eyes as possible. Yeah. Well, I will say back then, because now we're talking like 2013. Yeah. Instagram wasn't around too long. I joined, I joined back in like sophomore year of high school. And um, it was so basic. I don't, I don't know if there was even followers or anything like that. And it was so normal to have, like, s- these crazy filters. And it was basically right, like right. you take pictures of the street, of your ice cream. It wasn't really like an art thing. Yeah, that's what I thought of it as. I thought of it like it wasn't it's like that Pinterest. serious. Yeah, like the girls that were on Instagram. Like, it was mostly girls in high school. And, and I, I would just hear about it as like, oh, I just posted pictures of flowers and butterflies and stuff. So I was like, oh, I, I shouldn't. Because I thought of my art at the time. I was like, these are like my serious drawings, you know, yeah. like I don't want to put it on Instagram. But then I guess I gave in because everybody else did. Um, and yeah. Word. It was kind of rising up. Because even back then, I, it would be like half of it was my life taking pictures of like my siblings and everything. Right. And then I'd post a drawing. And it was like the only people that I knew were following me because I don't think there was a way to really reach people i'm not sure if even hashtags were a thing no i think hashtags were a thing in the beginning yeah okay i think and then like the limitations were that you can only like post in a square format yeah so definitely that. that was so i think that's what kind of limited the whole art thing too because you couldn't they had, didn't have those apps where you could like square it off and show the full picture what really pushed it was when there was a lot of these art accounts that had thousands and thousands of followers and the goal was to get featured by these guys because that was like your one ticket into getting a lot of followers so yeah yeah, that that. was definitely a goal for me to be featured by these fake art accounts (laughs) (laughs) fake art accounts didn't you have one that yeah yeah i used to run one um which got featured at the time there was this page called Norton, which was like one of the biggest art Mm -hmm. instagram accounts and like my goal was to get featured by them um and then I eventually ended up making my own like art Instagram for like posting my favorite artists, and Norton gave that page a shout out, so I gained like a bunch of followers. But uh, yeah, it, it ended up getting deleted because I was posting like nude paintings, like some of right, my favorite. Right, that painters. was like that weird thing with their policy that you can't show nudes, but it's just like super like rendered. Yeah, like, so, some paintings. of my favorite painters would like paint nude figures, and yeah, I got banned for posting that, but. Uh, yeah, yeah they, Instagram they thought they were photographs. <laughs> yeah. Classic. Yeah, Instagram has always been weird like that. And I, I hated how they've changed over the years where it's just like, it's not even in consequential order. Like in, what's the word? I'm blanking right sequential? now. Sequential? Sequential order where it's just you post and it's like someone could see it three days later. Some people see it the same day. And it's just like, you don't know. It's like a hit or miss. Like only 10% yeah. of your followers are actually seeing your work. I mean, yeah, it doesn't the, apply to you now, but the, the algorithm is better than sequential though. You think so? Yeah. Yeah. Way better. I don't know. Because it, it's smart enough to know like what you want to see. So you end up having a better time on when you're scrolling through because you don't, cause imagine you follow like a thousand people you don't want to see like every single person's post like you know but the algorithm like kind of knows what you like pause your screen on or like what yeah. you like what you engage with so it like calculates what you enjoy seeing so it's going to like not show you like all the stuff you don't want to see but um, then it go what about like that you're only seeing then 10 percent of all the followers because there's people that i've followed for a while now that i've always wondered 
th- like I was talking to Craig about it, that you, you follow them for so long and then you're wondering where have they been, you know, and then you go to their page and it's like they've already posted like 20 things that never popped up on your feed. You know what I mean? Yeah, but I, I think overall it just works better because it just because they want you to see like the, the ads. Right. So and they want to keep you on the app longer. Um, so you just like enjoying the app more is going to keep you on longer and just mathematically it works out better that way because they, they you know, they do. Um, like, I feel like they wouldn't have done it if they didn't do like studies on it and stuff. Well, it sounds like it's better for the user and not as the great creator for the creator. Yeah. If you don't have that that following or influence. Yeah, because I feel like if you, before the algorithm changed, if you already had a decent amount of followers, I th- feel like you were fine. But if you were still starting out less than a thousand or something, it was just like kind of against you. I feel like it's more pay to play now when you're that small. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it is bad for like some creators because you kind of like have to make what social media like likes yeah it's like you're not really creating for yourself you're really just creating for those likes yeah it's not the best for like it's probably not the best for like straight up artists like it, it's the yeah. best for like content creators yeah yeah right. i mean yeah it's made for content creators not for yeah people who draw yeah yeah so uh, so let's go back into just then college um oh yeah so sorry no no you're good so you you cut you kind of said that it wasn't really for you you kind of wanted just to branch out on your own and do your own thing so in your so do would you recommend people to go to college for art or is that just like kind of your your path that you chose on your own yeah i don't want to like give any recommendations for other people but for what i did um at the time um i was on instagram throughout high school and i was like in a few magazines and stuff so um I would always get like DMs or like emails for um for like commissions here and there. So, you know, I would get booked up for commissions and um so me and Craig went to high school yeah. of art and design and we already like took a whole foundation course on like four years of of pure like drawing and art and so by the time we got to college, like taking another foundation course was just so like it was just something It was we, just repetitive at yeah, that point. Yeah, it was point. just so repetitive. Yeah. So that being repetitive me already having commissions and also like me thinking like, Oh, I can make it through social media. Like this is a new world. I don't need this degree. And also thinking like, I could always come back and get this degree, but I want to like take my chances and try to make it now. Like I only have, um, I don't know. I was just always very anxious to make it like while I'm young, you know, like I don't want to wait until I'm 30 to make it like waste, not waste, but in my head at the time, like I don't want to put in these four years of college to like, work for a grade because you know in college like it takes all your time you know how much time you had to put in those projects like you don't have time for your own stuff and i'm like i want to build my own dream without that i want to have like all my hours and um try to use and then if it doesn't work out go back to college because there were kids in college while i was there that were like 25 26 i'm like i'll give myself like all those years and go back as as a 26 year old i'll still be fine you know right nfit was like so cheap Compared to other art schools, um, where I was like, you know, yeah, that state school life, it's great. But um, so I know at one point I think you, you were, you really liked the whole like ten thousand hours things. Yeah. So can you kind of elaborate on that? Did you, did you kind of use that as a way to like guide yourself after college to like just work on your stuff? Um. Yeah. So. Uh. It's funny because, <laughs> all right, so back in high school, um, all right, so before I went to art and design, I went to this school called Samuel Gompers, and I thought I was good enough to get into art and design. I did my portfolio, didn't get in. Uh, I just wasn't good enough. Went to Samuel Gompers. I met an art teacher there, Jeremy Harper. He taught me how to draw. Um, he taught me, we took like six months of classes together, and he helped me rebuild my portfolio to reapply. When I got into art design finally for a sophomore year i was so like hold on sorry <laughs> i was i was so um we gotta edit that out no it's good it's I, fine i was so um i was so like mad at myself for wasting a year right so i was like right. 
And then I saw how good the kids at art and design were. So I'm like, you know what? Like these kids, I can't believe how much better they are than me. Like I'm gonna go so hard. So I literally went around like me as like a stupid 15 year old, like going around like, oh, I'm gonna be the best in this school. I'm gonna be so good. And I really, that's all I would talk about. Like anybody that would like listen to me, anybody I spoke to, like the conversation went to art and how I'm gonna be the best, right? And looking back, I'm like, I can't believe I used to say those things. But anyway, um, so I told this kid named Malcolm that, and he was like, oh, you're not better than Craig. And then right. I was like, I was like, who's Craig? He was like, Craig Franco, like, you're not going to be better than him. So I was like, um, what? I never met Craig or like, um, that was the first time hearing of him. Thanks, so I was, Malcolm. Yeah. <laughs> Malcolm. So um, he, I was like, how do you spell his name? So I looked up Craig on Facebook and I saw all his drawings, his graphite portraits. And Craig was like, wait, a million times better than him. I'm like, yo, how the hell is he doing these drawings? Like, I need to compete with Craig. Like, <laughs> like I'm like, Craig is the best artist in the school. Like, I need, so... Um, I remember Harrington had an AP art class. So at the end of my sophomore year, I went to Harrington's class and I was like, how could I be in this class? Like I heard this was the best class. And he's like, oh, you got to show me your drawings. And then, so I showed him my drawings and he was like, oh, these are pretty good. Let me put you on this list. So he put me on this list and he was like, all right, you'll be in my class next year, junior year. He was like, um, I'm also giving away scholarships to be in the Art Students League for the summer. He was like, do you want one? I was like, yeah. And he just gave it to me and it was free. So all summer I went to um, the Art Students League, um, and I studied life drawing, drawing nude models, and um, I did that all summer. And I'm like, I'm, I'm getting ready for Craig. I was probably thinking about Craig every day that summer, and I never, met, never met I him. Never met him yet. Never met him yet. So, we were doing like gesture drawings, um, long poses, short poses, um, all summer. Like, and and then uh, I had an internship that that summer. After the internship, it was in Columbus Circle. I, I worked at the Museum of Arts and Design. There was this statue by Central Park. I would go outside. Um, I would leave work every day and draw that statue for like two hours. And then, um, I mean, I was getting better for myself. But, you know, in the back of my mind, I'm like, art and design didn't accept me. Craig's better than me. So <laughs> anyway, so first day of school, um, I think it was like the last class of the day. Um, I went straight to Harrington's room. I went there early. And Craig was the, like probably it was probably like three students in the class and Craig was like one of the earliest ones. He was sitting right in the front. I'm like, oh, shit, that's Craig. Like, let me go sit right next to him. Like, I'm going to show him like we're going to compete with each other. So we this had to guy. draw we had to draw this sculpture of Lincoln. And um, so Harrington's like introducing himself. I'm like so excited. Everyone's like we're ready to do a life drawing. I'm like, I've been preparing for life drawings <laughs> all summer. Like, this is what I this is what I do anyway. So. We start, I'm drawing and I'm looking at Craig. I'm like looking at his page. I'm looking at my page. And then um, we all just started talking. And then eventually I'm like, wait, why am I competing with Craig? Like Craig's mad cool. Like Craig <laughs> is dope. So me and Craig, um, we just ended up becoming friends. And I don't I don't know if I told him like, like right after or like a year after. I don't know when I told him, but I think I ended up telling him like, yeah, you know, when I first sat next to you, it was to compete with you. And then we ended up becoming best friends. Um, but yeah, that's how me and Craig met. <laughs> yeah, that's wild, man. Um, I think I told about, like on our podcast, I was talking about how we met. Mm -hmm. And it was, uh, th I think, uh, Carlos Aponte's class, right? Mm-hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. And Fashion then, Illustrator. Yeah, then you were like uh, showing off, I think you had, a, you had made a photo book, I want to say, of like Batman or something. It would, like or maybe like toy photography like i think that i think i had a okay yeah i had a, a book a photo book because there was like some crazy sale promotion yeah batman was like an acrylic painting in that book where he's like oh, holding oh um, okay yeah yeah so i'm thinking that was like your work and i'm just like that's the first time i meet you and i see that and i see other people's work and then i see my work because you got to understand that coming from long island there's not much art over there. It's like you only have that one art class all year. And then there's usually just like one or two kids that actually do pretty good. And I was one of them. So I'm here thinking, all right, I, I should be fine when I go into the school. So to my surprise, I meet you, you two. And then it's just like, all right, it's go time. I got to figure this all out. So then I meet Devon in uh, Karen Sanchez's class. I think you were sitting right next to me. Right? Was I or what? It was it Santry's class or was it um, Cat Catalano's class? Sal, maybe, yeah. maybe Sal, yeah. 
Yeah, cause no, I distinctly remember with you. It was we had to do a a, a black and white <laughs> painting, and you were like, "Can I do it in oil?" And he told you, "No, you gotta do it. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta do it in acrylic." And then, so he's like, "It's gonna take like a week, or like two <laughs> weeks, or whatever." And then this guy comes in with a full color oil painting. No, it was black and white. It wasn't black. Yeah. I could have sworn it, it was, was black color. and white. Cause yeah, he, okay. sent, he was sending me pictures of it. <laughs> I get behind the scenes of it. Yeah, okay, yeah, okay, okay. It was okay. black and white, yeah. And then he was, he, I, I remember Sal just like yelling at you for that. But um, he was just like, whatever, man. And then started like teaching you on, that, on the spot. And then I'm just sitting in the back like, is he for real? <laughs> just like yeah, no, coming I hate out with acrylic. a full, point, full painting and everything. So that's the first time I met you, and then ever since, you know, we've been getting closer and closer. But um, yeah, you know, that's the college experience for me. It's like seven years ago. Ugh, stop, man. Isn't that crazy? That yeah, it's crazy. I I could I just feel like we graduated not even like two years ago, you know. But um, yeah, man, time flies. I graduated that year. <laughs> graduated <laughs> myself. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. But, um, so, I mean, obviously you don't regret it now, like leaving at that yet. time. Not, not yet. yet. Yeah, so far so good. So you're not going to, I don't think you, there's no point of you going back for a degree at this point. We don't know what's going to happen in five years. <laughs> 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 All right. So, so let's get it. Cause you, you left because you're already getting commissioned. So I want to like kind of talk about what was the experience with your first commission that made you realize that you can make a career out of this art? Um, I don't even remember when the first commission was. I don't know. I just always had this delusional idea that I'm going to make it. Like, <laughs> literally always. Um, I don't know if Craig remembers. Craig, do you remember, like, me coming into Harrington's class and, like, like telling you, like, I'm going to make it and stuff? Oh, he was saying that every day. <laughs> every, oh, my God. Every day, yeah. I mean, what, I guess that's what people say when you're speaking it into existence. Yeah. Kind of thing, you know. So... But yeah, no, there wasn't no, yeah. like one commission. Um, when it started to like be back to back and like it was too much. By too much, I mean like three months booked or like two months yeah. booked. And um, I was like, damn, I'm only one person. Like I, you know, like I can't. Um, I started to put the prices up just because I couldn't right. handle all of it. So when you, but I'm, I want to kind of talk about like when you first left college. Like uh, um, how many, how much were you like booked up at that time? I don't remember. It, it would come like here and there, um, but yeah. I remember yeah, thinking pe- that would just come to you like through Instagram. Yeah, yeah, through thing. Instagram or like email and um, mostly through Instagram. And I would just think like, it you know, it's been like two years now that um, you know, even during high school, that it's been kind of consistent. So um, you know, I just got to save my money, make sure I do it, and yeah. And plus, I was living in my grandma's house, so I didn't have like any bills like expenses or yeah whatever. i didn't have any the yeah. only expense i had was like my phone and then you know to eat whenever i left so i didn't really it wasn't too hard you know i was yeah. like very lucky that i didn't you know because some kids have to like work that probably would have messed me up if i would have to if i would have had to work at like 18 years old and like you yeah, need yeah. to help pay the bills you know some kids have it like that and like i didn't have to like help pay the bills at 18 um so i had some years to like just learn and just build myself yeah and but with that you also need discipline because you could all have all that not have to worry about bills or anything but if you don't have the discipline i don't think you could get to where you got you know yeah so how is that like trying to keep consistent in that way um i think i have more like more passion than discipline you know like I enjoy what I do and like I just think about it every single day and like it's just what I do even if I wasn't getting paid for it so just it being fun like like if you want to do something in life you should find something that's fun to you because nobody you don't need somebody to like a boss to tell you like yo get up and do this like you just do it and then (laughs) one day you did it enough where you're like oh oh shit I'm like good at it now like now people want to pay me and it was like you know like I feel like I'm lucky because um I feel like other people like work way harder than me. It, it, I just put in a lot of hours because I enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. But yeah, yeah. I mean, I think now more than ever, you can if you have something, you can make it money out of it because of the internet. It's like so wide now. That, yeah, I mean, I feel like yeah. if you're passionate about anything, people will give their time. Yeah, for sure. To watch it, and that somehow generates income. If you think about it, smart. 
But I will say about Devon's point is that even when he left college and everything like that, we've always been in contact nearly every day since high school, texting. I would say like 90% of those days we were texting about art. Yeah, about drawing. And yeah. it wasn't like a forced thing. It was just like what we, what we think spoke about, about yeah. what yeah. we laughed about, what we analyzed, who's this person doing, this is what we're working on, this is the commission I'm doing. Yeah, it's not like the teacher, like I remember at FIT I was dorming because um, I wanted to get the dorming experience and uh, I wanted to see what it was like to live in Manhattan, you know, being from the Bronx. Um, so I dormed and I remember I used to like paint in this basement and some kids used to ask me like, oh, what class is that for? And I'd be like, oh, no, this is just for me. And they'd be like, what do you mean? Like, mm -hmm. what? No, like you're not doing that as an assignment. Yeah. And then I'm like, no. And they're like, why would you do that? For yourself like you're just putting more work on yourself i'm like no this is just what i like to do yeah yeah um but yeah me and craig always like just no i could imagine like an assignment to, like a professor's like being like talk to your friends about art for one hour a day <laughs> right, like, right right but no me and craig always like we like even to it was this just day, a natural like, thing you know that yeah, you guys talked about like like we'll be outside and like we'll like look at somebody's ear and we'll be like yo bro look at the way the light like look at the, falls look at the red the, through yeah, the yeah look can at the you mix red. that yeah exactly like yo, yo, you think you can mix that weird. color right there like <laughs> that's just like stuff we talk about like yo what color would you mix to get that and we're like oh i'll do this or whatever yeah so that's just straight up studying all day at that point like yeah it's, it's like also studying the way you think yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> You guys just think in shapes and <laughs> like, This one's a little blue, yeah. <laughs> a little more yellow in her. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, let me see. So then, you you're getting all these commissions and everything, um, but you also are working to get into these galleries. So, I kind of want to see. I want you to like let people know how. What do you have to do to get get go about getting these kind of galleries? to like represent you or show your work or like what did you do in the beginning to kind of get your, your work to be more credible to all these places that you've been through um so i didn't i haven't worked too much with galleries um i've been in like a few group shows here and there but um i remember um I'm trying to think about what I could say publicly, <laughs> but i'll just speak openly well um, like you know how who do you contact when it comes to galleries stuff like that so um i'm always like very like shy like when it comes to like galleries or, or just like reaching out to people to ask them for stuff like I, I always waited like i mean i wasn't like waiting around because while i'm waiting you know people are like commissioning me so i would just sell directly to people but uh during that time like i would post all my work on instagram and like some galleries would reach out to me and then i was like involved in a few group shows but uh um I noticed that like I remember there was this one gallery um, that I was like I want to put my prices up because at the time like it wasn't worth me selling through them because the prices that I would get through that gallery I would get through like one of the people that would collect my work so I remember I would go through this issue where like I would send um, a gallery a painting for a show and then they would want me to promote it on my Instagram and then I posted on Instagram and then my, one of my clients would like they were like, yo, I really wanted that painting. I went and bought it from the gallery because that's what you do. You know, you buy yeah, it from the yeah, gallery yeah. that it's in. Then the gallery takes 50% of that. So it happened to me like a few times where I was like, you know what? Like, I don't need a gallery. Like every time my money gets split up because um, they go straight to the gallery instead of coming to me um, because that work was in the gallery. But whenever I had to work anyway, point is, is that I figured that um, it was just better to sell through myself. So I never really got, I mean, I mean, you had a clientele list already pretty much b before you got into the gallery. So like, yeah, in, in, that, in that way, it worked out for you. Yeah. So I would, you know, I would tell the galleries like, you know, can we put the prices up so that it could be um, worth it for me? I, w I mean, I wouldn't say it like that, but I was just trying to get yeah. the prices up. But just negotiate. Yeah. But at, at the time I was like 19 or, or yeah, I was like 19 or 20 years old. So it was someone like you're too young for like higher prices. Like we're sticking you to wow. that. Yeah. I remember that. So I, I kind of like stopped working with them. Um, and then, um, I was just doing it through myself. You know, I was just, you know, if you liked my painting and you wrote to me and I told, I gave you a price and, and you said, yeah, you know, I would just get paid and then keep doing it over and over until, uh, until social media. And then my job changed a little, but I'm still doing what I love. 
So what? What? How do you set your prices? Like, because I know that's a thing where artists starting out, they're always like underselling themselves. Was there ever an issue with you? I know with like the gallery, you know, you wanted to pay, like, get more out of it. But was it? Yeah. That, that always a thing for you, like underselling yourself. Um, sometimes, you know, like in the beginning, I would think like, all right, that was a decent price. And they said, yeah, to it. But then while I start the painting and I see you how just, much work yeah, it takes yeah. and like how like. Yeah. So how do you calculate that to like help these people out? I don't know. Maybe Craig can answer. <laughs> no. Um, um, that? Yeah. Because I mean, you know, like how much I mean, you, you don't really know how many hours you're going to put into a painting before you start it. Like, you just kind of like a guessing game. Yeah, the, so the way I would do it is it's just like I try to think about how much I need to make or like how much I'm comfortable with to make in a month, every month. And then, um, you know, and how much my time is worth and how long something's going to take me and uh, how much I need to eat and all that so I could continue Cause I never wanted to like work a regular job. I was always like, like, I don't want to life. You know? Yeah. I was yeah. always like, I don't want to work like retail or do anything else other than painting. It's a nightmare. I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I was just like, how could I, you know, like make a living? And I had enough people writing to me where like, if some people said no to the price, um, somebody else is going to say, yeah. Um, so I was just very lucky with that. And also not paying bills with my grandma um, in the beginning. Um, I sound spoiled. I sound so spoiled no, right no, now. No, no, um, Because that does take into it, like account like what you're willing to like risk when you're telling someone a price. Because if someone says no, and then you needed that money to pay rent at the time, you know. Yeah, exactly. It affects it. it affects everything. But you you were able to um, you like use that leverage to you know yeah so be I, more confident in your pricing. I would look at other artists that were like around my skill set, and then look at what they priced it at, and then um. You know, based on other things like, yeah, but some artists be like secretive about their pricing. So how would you find out? What is they from like galleries? Or oh, like, galleries and stuff. So that's yeah. like kind of where you gauged it at. Okay. Yeah, that's a good point. I never thought of doing that. Uh, I feel like most people, our age, at least the generation of this age, a lot of them are home quite a bit. What is up? Like they live at home with their parents or with family. That's like a modern thing. So I feel like a lot of people can relate to that, not you being spoiled. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Especially in New York because New York is so expensive. It's like impossible oh to leave. So like you got no options. Yeah. 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 But no, but some people have to, especially in the Bronx and, and all the like poor um, areas of New York, like some people have to like help their mom out, like starting at 18 or 17 yeah, or straight yeah. out of high school. You know, I mean, that's kind of anywhere too. Like that was the same thing in Long Island, you know, uh, everybody had to have like a, a job around like 15, 16. Yeah. And they can afford it. And then like kind of just pay what they can like and help out any way they could. Mm -hmm. But um, I mean, that is different for everybody, but you know, like you said that this generation does have that like freedom of uh focusing on what they want to do yeah yeah no yeah. one's gonna judge you if you stay home till like 25 26 word word 30 yeah some yeah. Guys. yeah i mean 35 anything to no, say <laughs> 40, 40 in the basement <laughs> 50 is fine 50 yeah so let's uh so then let's just start, start talking about tiktok <laughs> um because we we all started through this pandemic last year and um so i want to just kind of talk about that what was your experience going through the pandemic like pandemonium how did, pandemonium <laughs> how did that affect you um so we we're all going through the pandemic um yeah. i had a like a three-month waiting list of paintings and um everybody was on tiktok you know i saw people blowing up on the internet and i was like i, I want to join tiktok but um Sorry, I got distracted a little bit by that <laughs> shiny thing. <laughs> so everybody was on TikTok and stuff. And I, I was like, um, like, so I was teaching myself how to edit. And then um, I was like, I'm going to record everything that I paint. So I was working on all these commissions. And every commission I did, I was recording what I was doing. And then, um, you know, I would post them. Like, it would get like 500 views, 600 views. And, you know, it was decent. But for TikTok, like, I'd see all these other people get millions of views. And I'm like, yeah. like, damn, how could I do that? Millions. <laughs> how could I get the millions of views like that? 
billions. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah. Yeah. So how'd you figure it out? Like, cause so you, I, yeah. so I had to get through the commission paintings. I had to wait three months because people are waiting for their paintings. I had deadlines yeah, yeah. and stuff, so I couldn't even start my um. So I had this idea of, because I started off drawing people on the subway, like back from when I went to Sam Gompers High School, Jeremy Harper, that teacher, he would draw people on the subway and show me. And um, so then I ended up starting, um, I was doing paintings on the subway. So at that time, my time was like split between doing paintings on the subway and um, doing commissions. And um, commissions was always like, um, Auto, automatic yeah, yeah not a priority but like it was like automatic money uh -huh. to live and then like a commission was like i mean a subway painting was like people would buy it if they want it you know and a lot of times people bought it but like it was never guaranteed so i remember i thought like um once i'm done with these commissions like i'm gonna um start drawing people on the subway um but i just gotta wait and um i mean i was kind of like losing hope because I wasn't getting any views doing my paintings and I thought I was talented and I was like, um, it's not gonna work out anyway. So I, st I remember I started to like um, paint um, like some of my favorite rappers and stuff. Like I painted uh, Kanye, Kanye West yeah. and then I painted Tyler the Creator and um, those all flopped. And then I was like, how could I paint something that I love um, and do something that I love and still get views? Um, so I, I was like, you know what? I'm going to draw people on the subway. Um, and I kept procrastinating on it um, for a long time. Like, I even wrote in my notes, like, next idea is going to be painting on drawing on the subway. Um, anyway, I finally got to it, and mm -hmm. then I did it, and I did the first one, and then I got, like, 8 million views the first time. The first try? Yeah, yeah, first try. I oh got 8 million God. views. And I was like, how the hell did I get 8 million views? Like, that's insane. I'm so like, what did you, ta like, was it the tags or anything, or you just kind of just posted it to post it? You weren't... Uh, it was just like, uh, it's just like people love to see it. Um, I don't know, like people consider it good content, I guess. So, um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm glad because it's like, like, like you said, every artist wants views, every artist yeah. wants attention on them. So it was like the best of both worlds for me where I got attention and I also got something that I love doing because I've been drawing people and painting people on the subway for like the last like eight years. So it's just something that happened to work on TikTok and something that I was always into. And I was even doing it for free. Like when me and Craig were in um, high school of art and design in senior year of high school, we had to do a concentration project where we did like a whole year on one subject, making art on that one subject. And mine was the subway. Um, and it's seven years, eight years later. And now like it's viral on TikTok. So that's wild, man. Yeah. So. Hmm. Yeah, but basically the way something goes viral, because you asked me about the, the tags, um, it's basically just the content. Like yeah. people have to, like a majority of the people that watch it have to watch it for a long time for like the TikTok algorithm to know that it's like worth sharing to other people. Yeah, and I guess that's what's good about TikTok too, because you, you could start at zero and then they'll still like kind of branch it out to everybody who has TikTok. Kind of yeah, thing, when you know? when I um when I got that first eight million views, I only had like, I don't know, probably like a thousand followers. Like right. you could get on right now with zero followers, and and something could just blow and up. Get millions of views. Yeah, yeah. yeah. As, as long as it's like the right content at the at that time, I guess. Yeah. You know. So, is this something that you're always gonna be doing? Because you said you've been doing it for like years now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, is it like? I feel like there's gonna be a point where you're be you're like too popular, and that people are just gonna recognize you in on the subway. Yeah, yeah, it happened. It happened a few times, <laughs> um, but it's okay. Um, I mean, it happens. Um, yeah, it happened. It happened a lot, like this past month. Um, even like walking outside on the street. But I don't post too many pictures of myself, like on Instagram, so not many people know what I look like. But you know, every now and then people stop me and they want a picture or something. Yo, it's TikTok. Yo, it's TikTok. <laughs> Yo, it's Mr. TikTok. Is that um, what they call you? They just come up to you like that? <laughs> just just my boy, Teddy. He calls me TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so now you're on YouTube and I feel like you're the one, of, the way that you grew on YouTube in such a short time is just insane. Like what yeah, you, yeah. you have over... How much is it now? Like, I think it's seven thirty k subscribers. Oh my gosh! 
trash, dude. You know Where's how- the plaque? <laughs> the plaque is like right over there. Plaque's on the wall. The yeah. silver one. That's a long time ago. Yeah. yeah. So In numbers. I, yeah. Like That's you, a long ago. Days. These so, things take so. years for people to like go through. And then you got it within like months. Like I think there's another plaque for like what? 500K that you could probably be getting. Uh, one million is the next one. The gold oh. one. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. One what's million. The, what's the one? What's <laughs> one the million. one? With, what's the one with like the diamond? I think that's ten million. One billion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. What about these ad libs? <laughs> <laughs> so. <million. laughs> so is this gonna like is YouTube gonna just be another way for like the TikToks that you've made to live as compilations, or are you gonna be like posting other kind of content there too? Um. For now, I'm very busy with like my other content, but I got very lucky with YouTube. Um, my manager, Logan, shout out to Logan. Um, she's the one that convinced me to get on YouTube. And um, I was like, my time is so t- tied up with other things. So I can't really do YouTube right now. She's like, no, just put all your TikToks in a compilation and just post it. And I was like, all right, I'll do it. And like, I never got around to it. And then, like a month later, she's like, did you do the compilations? And I was like, no, I didn't do it. <laughs> um she's like come on just do it so then i did it so fast like on this editing app i just put it together i just put them like next to each other put like a actually i didn't even put a royalty free song which Uh, i got demonetized uh, for it because you know i didn't know about youtube and um anyway i posted it and i got uh 35 million views is that 35 million views now and at the time how many subscribers did you have i had i had ten thousand because i had um the YouTube plugged into my TikTok, so people would randomly right. subscribe. So I had ten thousand subscribers, but yeah, so it got to thirty-five million views, and then the subscribers were just growing and growing and growing and growing. I think I got that. Um, I'm not bragging. I got lucky. No, like, no, we're talking about what actually happened. Yeah, so, so I got that hundred k plaque in like I don't know, like in a week because it just. Oh my gosh! Wow! It dude. just that one video just yeah 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 it just went everywhere. Just every day, I so then I posted more compilations of like other TikToks and uh yeah, it just grew so fast. Every day was like like I wake up one day will be like a hundred k and then the next day like two seventeen k and the next day like three thirty k. I'm like, how is this happening? You right, know, like, off of that one video. Yeah. So. So you you still don't have like plans to do anything else because you're kind of like tied up. Yeah, not at the moment, but I have so much time. Hopefully, any um, ideas? In this, this world. Um, no, I haven't really thought about it. I, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> so, so now you're like doing all this kind of content, primarily now like TikTok, and then uh, you know posting it through YouTube and everything. When did you realize that like TikTok was gonna change your life, pretty much? Probably um, close to the mic, please. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Probably Joe Rogan be like, pull that sucker up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Put it close to your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Probably like the first video that I posted because whenever I'm into something, like I get very obsessive. So while I was on TikTok, like I was like, while I'm painting, I'm like listening to every YouTube video that people like the TikTok coaches like talk about and. Anyway, they would mention things like when you find a viral idea, um, it could possibly work again and again and again and again. And um, and for years, like I said, I was drawing subway people like over and over and over and over. So why wouldn't I record it over and over and over yeah. and over while I'm, you know, while I'm posting it on TikTok and stuff? Um, you know, because I'm gonna do it anyway. Might as well film it. So um, basically, like almost every time I post one, it goes viral. Um, so anyway, so I knew by the first one, it would like change my life because if it happened once, it's going to happen again. So imagine going viral times 30 times or times a hundred times, you know, it's just like, I already knew how fast people grew on TikTok and like, I saw other people growing. Um, and what was the consistency of you like posting all these videos? Was it like one a week two like every day kind of thing or, um, I was still bit bu- like I was still bu- in the beginning I was still busy with other things like commissions um and um just paintings and um but I finally like got into the groove of trying to post every day but um sometimes things get in the way but yeah so then you get like all these followers and everything you're getting all this like publicity but you still have these commissions when did you realize that you had to kind of stop 
once I was done with those three months, I haven't done a commission since. So you kind of like closed the, the commissions up until that point, kind of. Yeah, thing? yeah, yeah. Well, I just like, I just can't handle them. Like, I mean, no, it's just you, you, yeah, it's there's just only too, so much time in the day. Yeah, you yeah, have, exactly. You know? I'm only. Yeah. My boy said bye bye now. <laughs> <laughs> bye bye. Yeah, so I can't. Yeah. So now, because now you're uh, about to hit two million on Instagram, I didn't check TikTok. What's what are you at at TikTok? Oh, uh, fourteen million. Fourteen million, insane. So obviously, with all that kind of fame, then you get all all the sorts of love and everything, but you also get criticism. So I kind of want you to talk about like the highs and lows of like becoming famous on like social media and like literally everywhere now now everybody's seeing your work um it's like 99 percent high one percent low <laughs> um yeah no i mean it's fine i get some hate comments i get some haters and stuff but um i just try to ignore it i mean uh yeah shout out to the haters i hope they're watching <laughs> they're definitely no, watching. they're probably gonna be in the comments no, i mean i mean i love them they help me a lot because so like the way I told you about the algorithm and, and the watch time, the more people watch the video, the more your video gets pushed, the more yeah. comments you get, the more your video gets pushed as well. So all the haters commenting, they're helping my video get pushed. Pretty much, so yeah. the videos that I make, make the world happy. And the more they comment the hate, the more it spreads the love. So keep <laughs> commenting, <laughs> keep commenting. We love that. They're helping me. Um, I mean, they isn't there like a whole reddit thing on youtube yeah there's a whole reddit uh shout out to the reddit i think i was number 12 trending on reddit um my boy's on 4chan yo <laughs> it's my, boy, chan. my boy's on 8chan, it's 8chan. You're, you're watching old, this documentary you're old, older, man <laughs> yeah um but um and well sometimes like in the beginning like when i wasn't used to it you know when yeah. you go from no followers to because on tiktok like i got to millions like fast like in weeks so yeah like in three months you already had like an insane amount of numbers right something like that yeah so when that happens when you go from zero to that you know in the beginning you're not used to it but then once you like once you hang around like other content creators you see like everybody gets hate and you start to realize like these are just people at home like they, yeah like, they're trolls they're you know yeah like they probably wouldn't tell you that in person like you yeah. could probably be walking down the street and like somebody that's in your comment section like hating on you will probably just tell their friend like yo that's the guy i was hating on that's the subway guy or like mm -hmm. that's this person like they probably wouldn't um and you know people always say like i realize um you know just being around people people always talk bad about people and then when they see them in person you they're, know they're a whole different kind of yeah person. they're a whole different person like these yeah. aren't their real thoughts these are just their thoughts like behind closed doors or like behind a keyboard like they just get more confidence but they will never like try to like disrespect you like in real life so yeah it doesn't mean anything is you know it's fine in the beginning it used to get to me and now now i got used to it um so do you, you don't even read the comments pretty much or you just kind of like do you do like the whole joe rogan you like post and ghost, <laughs> post and ghost. <laughs> yeah there's so many there's so many it's impossible it's impossible to read all the comments i remember you like when you first like started like when you had like your first million or two million and people were like sending you messages I saw you were trying to respond to all of them. Yeah. That's insane. Are you still doing that? Um, No, I, I can't. It's impossible. It's too much. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. But every now and then, like, I'll go in my request folder and I'll, like, open it and see, like, what people are saying and stuff. And um, sometimes I'll respond because they, they just say things that are so nice that I'm like, I feel so bad if I don't respond to this. Like, like if they write, like, a long, like, if. Let me not give people tips on how to get a response. <laughs> <All right. laughs> but it's so many that like it's impossible. And like I would spend my whole day. Um, sometimes I feel guilty about it. Like because I used to, before like this, I used to get um, I used to respond to like every DM. Like yeah. if you ask me like how to mix the color, what's my advice on drawing? What's I would like go on a rant like, oh, this is how I learned how to mix colors. Now it's just impossible to do so like um Cause I remember I used to write to some like some of my favorite artists and some yeah. of them would respond and whenever they did I felt so happy and like wow I can't believe he gave me that feeling so I would do that for others but now it's just like it's really almost impossible like it's just so hard I have so many things to do now it's time for those YouTube tutorials I know right <laughs> I mean I mean that way you can answer all those questions that because I'm sure you get like repetitive <laughs> you get repetitive like questions that you could just. <laughs> 
that you could just answer all with it like a video like, what are you or something. Doing? He's mixing colors. I think he's drawing and, yeah. and measuring. Ding, ding, ding. ding. <laughs> 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 all right, so now that you're all this all busy, you can't even really like answer all those DMs. So do you have people helping you around you? Like, do you have a team now? Like, I know well, you're working with uh, the company Collab at the yeah. moment, and are you bringing your work, or are companies, like, reaching out to you to work with them? Yeah, shout out to Collab. I love them. Um, so Collab is the agency I'm signed with, and then Logan's my manager. Um, yeah, brands reach out to me to work with me, like, on TikToks and stuff. Um, yeah, and then Logan, like, um, responds to my emails for me. Oh, She's that's amazing. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, I, I love her. She, Beautiful. Yeah, the responding yeah. to the email stuff is hard for me. I mean, when it becomes like so many, so uh, I have help with that. And then, um, you know, like negotiating the deals and stuff, she does all that. And then. Oh, you're solid. All you have to do is say yes or no, huh? Yeah, I just have to say yes or no and then that's do the awesome. work. Yeah, yeah. The art of the deal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great. It's a book? The or art of the book. It's a great book. It's a book. <laughs> I'm sure it's a book. Donald Trump. Donald Trump book. Um, so then I know that one of the <laughs> bigger campaigns you did was for HBO. So yeah. like, can you talk about that? What was the experience like working for a huge entertainment company like HBO? Um, it was fun. It was. Uh, it, it. I mean, it's great working for these brands. Like these are things that I used to do. Like I mean, we all did like in school for like. You know, for a grade, an assignment. Yeah, yeah, yeah for a for grade. Real. So doing these things for, for for a place like a brand like HBO is like where like millions of people are gonna see it. Um, it's insane. It doesn't. Sometimes it doesn't even feel real. Like I, like it feels like um, like anybody could have been in this position. Because yeah, yeah. I know people that are just as talented and more talented than me. Um, I'm just. Um, just he, a kid. He just got picked. Yeah, just, yeah, just a kid. Yeah, yeah. Just uh, got picked. Yeah. So what's the? <laughs> what? I'm watching Greg smiling watching on the screen. Yeah, <laughs> the screen. yeah it's kind of weird that we're seeing each other. We're seeing. I know. The literally, whole screen. the reason I'm why I keep eyes up. I'm not being yeah. rude to Albert. Not looking at him. I'm just staring at the screen. We yeah. can see all three of us. Yeah, yeah. So, so it's like people weird. watching this are gonna be like, why isn't he looking at him when he talks? Yeah, to yeah, him? yeah. <laughs> but it's just because I should have really just been sitting on the other side, so you weren't so distracted. But it's fine. Um, so what's like a dream client of oh, yours? I'm distracted by him. <laughs> it's beautiful. So cute. What's a dream client that uh, you want to work with or like a dream project? You. No. <laughs> <laughs> Please hire me, Albert. <laughs> Please hire me. Um, a dream client. I have no idea. Probably, uh, I don't know, like a commission by Kanye West. Oof, or, that'd, that'd be, be cool, right? That'd be big. That'd be pretty cool. Yeah. What about commission by Joe Rogan? Or Joe Rogan. Yo. Yeah, that would be a dream project. Um, you could probably yeah. do something for a studio, man. Yeah, that would be sick. Aliens. A bunch of aliens on the subway. For <laughs> aliens. Yo, we aliens. can set that up. Can... Millions of aliens. <laughs> on the subway. <laughs> 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 Gotta draw more. Yo, do you ever think about like being on his podcast? All the time. I'm thinking about <laughs> it right now. <laughs> Um, yeah. No, yeah, I've thought about it. I haven't really seen like artists on his thing. I mean, I've seen like one, but my goal. I'm setting this as a timestamp so that we could look back if there this happens. This podcast right now. My goal, not to get on his podcast, because that's uh, that's kind of major. I don't know if I yeah. can do that, but to get like one day him talk about one of my videos. Like if he sees, you know, Jamie oh, Brandon yeah, shows yeah. him like some viral videos. Yo, Jamie, pull that up. Jamie, pull that up at the Farmer Drinkers kid drawing people on the subway. Yeah, who's that kid? New York from the Bronx <laughs> dude it's sick no. <laughs> so like yeah just have him talk about what you're doing yeah you know every time like when you started getting famous I was just like going on the podcast just trying to fig- like see if eventually he was gonna bring it up because it was going everywhere because oh. then you, you have other like famous people like talking about you you were on uh, that that show uh, the Kelly Clarkson Kelly Clarkson yeah sure sorry <laughs> <laughs> Wait, say that again Kelly. so we could like edit that in properly. Um, no, I'm kidding. I'm just <laughs> yeah, nah, no. I, I, di- I barely edit this podcast. Kelly Clarkson. It's a one man show here. Oh. Um, so yeah, so Uh-oh. like you're it's being be perfect. <laughs> you're you're being on all these um like things being shown. So I, I eventually I thought maybe Joe Rogan would see it at one point, but um, I'm sure he has. Yeah, yeah. Imagine. I'm sure. I he think has. he has. 
I mean, yeah. we'll, we'll find out. We'll Imagine find he out. has and he didn't talk about it. Damn. Yeah. It'd Dreams be like crushed. that sometimes. <laughs> I mean, eventually, man. Um, so, yeah. I mean, you've worked with other famous people. I know um, Swiss Beats. Like, what, just we yes. tw- like we post all your stuff. Like, that was one of the first yeah. people. Um, Swiss Beats, Jennifer Coolidge, Craig Franco. <laughs> Yo, Craig Franco. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, a few here and there. That's awesome, man. I mean, that's the dream. If I see you on Joe Rogan, that's going to be insane. That's going to be insane. That'd be sick. All right. I'm so, practicing right now. Yo, right here. He's going to see this. This is going to be your resume. <laughs> <laughs> so then, um, what do you think the future is like for an artist right now? Because I feel like there's so many like different avenues to explore, expe- especially now with like NFTs being a new way to like make artwork and make a living as what an artist. What is an NFT? Do you know what an NFT is? It's a non fungible token. Yo, <laughs> educated. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, and we're surprised. These guys educated. <laughs> wow. What the? From the Bronx. <laughs> so uh, have any of these companies like reached out to you to like start getting into that kind of space? Yeah, I have some some friends um, that want me to get into NFTs with them. How do you um, feel about it? I, I haven't really looked into it. I. I uh, you know, I see like the huge success stories, and yeah, they're they're 69 amazing. Sixty-nine million people. Yeah, right. That's Killing crazy. Me. Millions. Sixty-nine million dollars. Yeah, every time we <laughs> say the word million, we trigger. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you should make that like a um a soundbite for the next one. I'm for, the soundbite guy. For, for whenever yeah, he's, he's not a, here. He's a soundbite guy. We did it for uh <laughs> like the podcast that we had with Nico too. Anytime Nico would curse, we we. You I had him say money. Pico, pica. No. Pica. Pica. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. If you pica, watch pica. That oh, so this is a nice callback to the episode 10 with Wolfpack. You could watch that so you can learn about the sound bite. Um, but yeah, so you don't, I mean, <laughs> so with <laughs> NFT. <laughs> Yo, no, no, no. <laughs> just, 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 no, no, no. What are you doing? <laughs> I'm going to blur those out. Um, <laughs> they don't think it's something else. Yeah. <laughs> Just skin tones. Skin tones. Um, We're mixing now. <laughs> <laughs> this is just jokes at this point. Um, so yeah, like back to NFT. Are you interested in in doing that? Like, yeah, I'm gonna do one soon with um with some people. How do you feel about like the whole environmental impact on it? Because I know that's like a controversial topic with people on the environment. Damn. Yeah. Boy, you really think I'm not that educated? Damn. Yeah. So like like the Earth. like the earth yeah so because i got reached out by a company too to like work with um like celebrities and making nft artwork with them um to do that and i started looking more into nfts as well and like a big thing with nfts is that because they're using the same like kind of systems as cryptocurrency because it's all blockchain and everything it needs a lot of power to like produce these blockchains to get verified through all these different machines so um with nfts with each token being made it's like a huge like a lot of emissions going on because it's taking up <laughs> so much power with all these computers i'm laughing because you're quick space your mouth is open like <laughs> yeah I'm, uh, i am what? no i'm no expert i just <clears throat> kind of got <laughs> <laughs> yo do that again we know that as a sound bite <laughs> yeah <laughs> I'm, like, I'm no expert but like that's kind of like the rough around kind of thing that I learned so about. So the currency oh, to yes. buy an NFT no, yes. versus the environment. No, so like creating the NFT. So like the to-, to tokenize something, it costs money like 80, I think like $80 to like make a token or whatever. But like they said that the creation of one token is up to like two hours of riding on, on like jet fuel of an airplane, like a two hour flight. Yeah, I don't understand any of this. Yeah, I mean that's what they're saying, you know. It's just part they. of like the the thing. It's yeah, they. no, I have no idea. Yeah. I have no idea. The token um, is what you use to buy an NFT. The token is what. I think the token is, is the is, NFT. Is the NFT? It's like isn't it a file? Oh, that's what the token is. The token is called the file. People are gonna laugh at us. Yeah, <laughs> this, this is just bad. Anyway, um, pull that up, Jamie. Pull that up, Jamie. Where's my Jamie at? But um, no, like they make the token, the NFT, and then that <laughs> that is verified by all these different machines. <laughs> this guy's laughing at me. I'm trying no, to explain. No, I'm laughing it. at Craig. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let me uh, I'm gonna turn over here just to explain to Craig. Um, so yeah, it's like 
they make the token, they sell the token, and then it's just constantly verified by all these different machines. So anytime it's being sold, it it reaches the original seller and like the owner mm. of it. And then anytime it's being sold, the artist is getting commission off of that. I see. So to yeah. make sure it's not a counterfeit file. Exactly, because everybody what everybody's saying is like I could just take a picture of this and not own it now. Right. But, it, but it's not that. It's like there's, it, like there's a, a whole certificate a matrix like, going on. Exactly. So like <laughs> with, for the, all of that to like happen, all these powerful like PCs like need to be like on at, at all times because they're acting as like servers for it. I see. Yeah. So yeah, but that's gonna go away. They're gonna figure out a way to. I don't know. Make one computer. Mm. Come on, back in the day, they had a computer the size of this room to run eight megabytes of RAM. I know. It's I, gonna I get guess, better. But yeah, but like right now, that's like the whole big argument about like the huge impact it's having on the environment. So Devon, do you want to hurt the, the environment power. with your art? Do you want to no. hurt the environment? He doesn't want to hurt the answer, environment. Folks. There's your answer. Next. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Next. All right. So. Oh, this is the long question I had. So I'm just going to read it from there. It's about to get real. It's going to get real. You're sick. All right. So, like, from when I met you, like, I've noticed, like, shifts in your career and, like, change in your goals. Now, please tell me if I'm wrong, but I feel like when you were in college, you were looking at, into getting into ga- galleries more heavily and then shifting to just living off commissions. And then there was a point in time that you were just, like, kind of tattooing, like, mm-hmm. exploring with tattooing to now being, like, a viral artist. So, in a sense... I just wanted to ask you what drives you to explore all these avenues. Same thing that drives everybody else. Money? Money? No. <laughs> all right. So, so the the that's a soundbite right there. <laughs> Facts. Um. So the thing with um the galleries and the commissions. My ultimate dream, um, at the time, or I don't even know. I don't know what my dreams are right now. But anyway, I wanted to just make my art, paint people on the subway, make that into my thing and sell that through galleries and i wanted to be in like major galleries but like i said i ran into the problem of like sometimes they could sell sometimes they can't so like the commissions were like the guaranteed thing to like make a living and like get paid so i was in this trap of like doing commissions like my goal was to do 50 50 but i was probably doing it like 70 percent commissions 30 percent of my own work yeah um anyway so i didn't want to do like a regular job i was like i just want to paint um i was just being spoiled um wait go back to the question why'd you scroll down <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, oh tattooing okay yeah so um i remember i was getting tattooed by chris garver and got this sleeve by him and um he was telling me about um uh so my dad was a tattoo artist he was doing he's been he was tattooing for like uh 25 years and stuff so um anyway so Garver was doing my sleeve and he was telling me like, yo, you should try tattooing. And I was like, oh yeah, really? Like I should. And he's like, yeah, you'll be good at it. Like doing portraits and realism. Like you should try it. Like I make, he was telling me how much he makes like every hour. Like you can make this much and stuff. It's a crazy amount. I mean, yeah. from what Craig has told me too. Yeah. So I was attracted to it by, um, money, money, <laughs> money, <laughs> millions. millions. <laughs> <laughs> we're yeah. peaking everybody millions um yeah so <laughs> uh so i so i mean i always wanted to do a job where i made money but also did something that i love so i used to think like tattooing is art related you know i didn't want to do anything that was like i can't do anything that i don't love for money like i just i can't function like that like i'd rather like just i don't know i'd rather not anyway so yeah um I was like, L- let me see how t- tattooing is. Like, maybe I'll enjoy it since, like, it feels like drawing. Like, when I watch people do it, it looks like drawing, whatever. So I tried it for, like, three or four months. Um, and I noticed that I didn't love it as much as painting. So I ended up, like, I stopped. And then I went back to painting. And then... Um, is there a reason why? That you didn't, like, um, feel passionate about it? I don't know. The people aspect? That's a big part of it, but I don't want to yeah. say that. What do you mean? <laughs> it's, just, it's, it's half yeah. the job. Yeah, that's half it's, the job. It's, it's viable. It's like customer service, pretty much. Like you gotta like talk to these people while you're tattooing yeah, them for like tough. hours. It's tough dealing with people. Um, yeah, yeah, that's that part. Is there hard. are people walking right now that have li- like limited edition like Devon tattoos. Yeah, they got lucky. That's me. Oh, yeah, he got one. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I got Rachel from Blade Runner on your leg, right? On my leg, and yeah. then I completed the piece by getting Deckard, also from Blade Runner, and then I connected. 
collaboration. Right, yeah. right, right. Shout out to collab. I think I was there. <laughs> Shout out to Logan. <laughs> I was there when you were working on Logan. On the Blade Runner piece. <laughs> Yo, man, funny. Um, a boy's so I, leg is worth a lot of money right now. Chop it off. Chop it off. The I can skin. still draw. Give me the skin. <laughs> How much? <laughs> Uh, but yeah, like, like so. Yeah, so talking. my heart wasn't fully into it, so I just stopped. Um, and then, um, so yeah, that's why I love TikTok so much because you know I I a lot like, of freedom with that TikTok. You don't stop. Yeah, and I love it. You should put the song on for this part. That's TikTok, a song. You don't I don't got stop. the license. You you want to pay for that license? No, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I do something that I love. I love drawing, and um, it just it just it just works so well, like. Um, now you're yeah, like, every day now yeah, yeah yeah TikTok is so like mainstream and like everyone loves it I'm so like popular like I'm friends with a lot of the TikTok employees like I'm friends with some TikTok yeah, so creators like, their office is here in New York uh, yeah I think they have one here I haven't been to it but oh but it's like the main, you, like Zoom calls kind of thing yeah yeah the main one is in, L- in LA I'm gonna as soon as they open up I'm gonna you're gonna visit them I'm gonna go visit them yeah like, like what's up why is Craig smiling so hard? <laughs> Craig is Craig. <laughs> I think he wants to come with me to TikTok. <laughs> That's what we did for one of his gallery shows with Nico. We we went like for just a weekend to to uh. Sacramento. Oh, the headquarters, TikTok headquarters. <laughs> oh, this guy's yeah, yeah. like on a whole different thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He said, "Come with me to TikTok." I was like, "Yeah, huh? the headquarters." Yeah, 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 yeah. So they're not open. They're just like everybody's working yeah, from home right now. now. Yeah, got you. You'll so, see why I was smiling when you review the footage. I'm scared. I don't even remember. I did all the yeah. smiles out. <laughs> nah, nah, this is going to be all fun and games. Um, well, okay, Devon was telling me to jump on TikTok when he was first starting off. And I was like, ah. I was, I, I was probably sending you voice notes like every day, right? Every like, day. Yo, bro, all the ideas this. he had. He's like, yo, tomorrow I'm going to draw someone <laughs> on the subway, bro. He's like, you watch, you watch. Um, and it Wait, I told him before. I told you before I did my first subway video. Like, yeah, I had this yeah. idea. He was like, "All right, I'm gonna do the rappers next." Yeah, that's not where they work in. I was like, "I don't know, bro." Yeah, you, um, guys, you guys are always just talking about art. I'll talk about anything else. Jeez, sorry, technical difficulties. Devon told me to get on TikTok. Yeah, and um, he was like, "Bro, I know the formula. Do this, this, this. How many seconds doing that?" But it wasn't really working. The thing that actually. The only video that blew up for me, or the only few, were <laughs> ones that I was painting toys. Yeah. Okay. I was customizing figures, and right, that's your, what blew up. Your Iron Giant, I think, blew up. Iron yeah. Giant. I did, like, a Megatron. Yeah. Um, I did, like, a Mario the Castle. The formula is to make sure there's not one second that's boring in your TikTok. Once you see a boring second, you cut that out. Yeah, my brother's on TikTok right now. He has, like, I think, I think 200. Thousand four hundred? I don't even know. Man, he's at the thousand with a long space. You got two hundred? <laughs> no, no, no. He has like a th- over hundreds, a thousand now. Don't waste a second. So yeah. that's what I'm gonna tell him. Don't waste a second. Yeah. He, but he like does like that skit comedy, like that came out like around, like um, what was that other one? That that green one before. TikTok? Don't waste a second, bro. You wasted like five <laughs> seconds. Wasted five seconds. <laughs> I would have swiped over that TikTok. <laughs> anyway, Maring. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding um anyway so are there any artists right now that you look up to currently who's like influenced your current work other than craig oh, um, this guy <laughs> loves craig millions <laughs> millions and billions what artists do i look up to yeah you guys just did the same thing at the same time we're listening yeah intently we want Stop the looking answers. at the camera and answer Sergeant. the question. I love Sargent's paintings. Why you come As in God. John Singer, Singer. Sargent, ah. the greatest musician of all time. <laughs> He's a painter. He's a painter. Um, yeah. I learned about Sargent because of YouTube, because you guys kept talking about him. YouTube? Because of YouTube. Oh, oh, I thought you meant because yeah. of Craig's YouTube video on Sargent. Oh, what? you have a YouTube back. video about Sargent? <laughs> I do, I do. On, on your YouTube? I don't know if it's on mine... It's somewhere. On bur- maybe on a burner account. Maybe it's not listed. I had to do it for our oh, history class, uh, okay. and we needed a place to upload it. Um, and I sent it to Devon. He was like, "How's your voice so clear?" The Yeti mic. I used the uh, the mic from the PlayStation Silver headset. Shout out. Oh, okay. You didn't answer my Sponsor question. Him. He said Sergeant. 
Sergeant's the, that, yeah, he can't the, be the only one. Um, yeah, Sergeant. Who's the other guy? James My, Harrington. James Harrington. James Harrington. When I answer for Devon. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, so what about? Oh, please, actually. Of oh God. Let me let me Flipping. tell you the artist that inspired me. The real artist. Jeremy Harper, my first high school teacher. James Harrington, my second high school teacher. And um, yeah, that's it. That's all I needed. All I needed was them two and like. And those are real people, not like just some random. Yeah, like, like soak up everything they know. And then they push me out to the world. And then. Um, Get out of here. Go become viral. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> I, I asked that question because now you're becoming a person that. Inspire millions. people, <laughs> inspire millions of people. So what? What do you feel like? Hope, do you hopefully. feel like any kind of responsibility? Hopefully millions. <laughs> do you feel like <laughs> any kind of responsibility towards them? What? Uh, when, like yeah, making I mean, sure you're a positive influence. Um, yeah, I'm a positive influencer. No, I'm kidding. Um, yeah, no, of course, of course, I always try to inspire them. That's why I, every now and then I like put out like a very like personal story or like. One of my childhood stories, like sometimes my family's like, "Why'd you say that on Instagram? Like you got millions of followers. Like, are you insane? Like, <laughs> yeah. why would you?" And I'm like, you know, like I'd rather you guys be offended by what I say, and have those kids be inspired. Like the other day, um, I just moved out the Bronx. I moved out of my grandma's house, and I was like going through all my books, packing up all my stuff, and I found like my yearbook, all my drawing books, my art books, and then I found um this journal that I used to write stuff in. And like I posted because I, I was it was like from 2015 and I wrote like I'm going to be successful no matter what. I know it like and um, like I, it, it looks insane. I, it's, it was like you got this. You're the chosen one. You're going to be successful. Like so um, I've read that and I was like, wow, I can't believe that I wrote that. And like now things like my dreams are coming true. And like as a kid, like I hated being like abused by my mom and stuff. Oh, you got to pay the claps. You said once I started talking about my childhood. Yeah. <laughs> oh. We don't want to get too dark. Yeah. Um. Oh, my boy's censoring me. No, I'm kidding. No, no, that was. Oh, oh, the I smack. Don't... Oh, yeah. No, I'm, about, <laughs> I'm about to get real dark. All right. So, um. Anyway, so I was just talking about on Instagram how like I hated being abused and all this stuff like in, by my mom and all this. So, um. Yeah. So I put out those stories so that people could know. Um. That you're a real person. That I'm a real person. Yeah. That they, because I remember one time my teacher, Mr. Harrington, I was so inspired by him, and he spoke about how him and his brothers used to fight, or like he doesn't like his brother and stuff. And I was like, wow, Harrington, he's so brilliant and so talented. Like I can't believe he has real issues like that. Like that means I could become something because you know he's fighting with his brother. Like that's crazy. Like I think I thought of Harrington as like a superhuman person. Right. So I'm like, if I tell people how like I was abused, I was this, I was that, and like tell them personal stories um then you know like they think that i'm not because if they put me on a pedal stool yeah pedestal, no like you're a gonna, yeah, yeah you're a relatable person and, yeah, yeah you know it's just showing them that you're still humble with like what you've been through yeah and um because like you go through all these celebrity accounts it's like they don't even control their own accounts anymore and it's just like them it's like th pretending that they're the ones posting what they're posting and, and it's just not genuine you know yeah so i think that's a good thing that you're doing man yeah yeah so i um yeah so people are probably like some family members are probably like offended that i like you know Put went to personal yeah. but uh you know it's real none of it is fake you could ask anybody in my family whatever you want <laughs> all facts <laughs> <laughs> but um so aside from now art do you have any other interests you're exploring um not really what about like video editing now because you know you got to incorporate that to your work yeah but it's just like the very very basics you know i just use oh, yeah. this app on my phone yeah and... like yeah so what do you use because pe people probably think like you're doing some elaborate like video editing and stuff you're just straight um, up using your phone for everything yeah let me uh yeah yeah uh i use this app called inshot yeah. inshot free ad right there they their stock just went up. Yeah. <laughs> Let me go buy, buy some before that I air this. Um, <laughs> yeah, and it's just like iMovie. My brother just uses straight up iMovie to like set him, set it all up. Vine, that's what I was thinking of. Cause Vine. Vine was only like six seconds, and I don't even think you can import a video. 
It's funny. I've it never had a Vine. Yeah. Um, it was the same concept. And I think at one point they were trying to like come back like a Vine 2.0 or something. Or I don't know if that was just like, bro. I think that was just a joke. And then TikTok came to be. So they t- kind of took over that platform. But um, yeah. So anybody can really make it in TikTok with just a phone. Don't waste a second. Don't waste a second. <laughs> <laughs> Motto of the day. So um, <laughs> th- so there's no other profession that you would like to attempt. Like, do you do you I see mean, anybody? I'm do you see anything that someone does and you're just like, yo, I wish I had the time to do that kind of thing? No. All right, my boy's content. I like that. All right, so what's success to you? Do you feel like you've reached it? Um, I don't know. That's such a deep question. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. It's too deep for me. Um, I mean, I think I reached what society will see as success but i don't know if i'm like i re- i really really feel very lucky you know like mm-hmm. who am i to say like yeah i'm successful like there's so many levels of success like when do you reach the yeah. final level like i yeah. don't know there's a that's always a thing like with that i could like think of for myself it's just you you set all these goals and then you reach it and then you're just like, okay, what's a, the next thing? Th- yeah, then there's a new level of success. Yeah. Like people probably, there's people way above me that look down on me and I'm like a failure. And then there's people who like, that are right below, below you. me, yeah. not below me, but like, that's well, like they haven't reached below yeah, me. Yeah. And then, you know, I'm like the biggest success. So it's like, I don't know. I don't know. It's just like, but I am like, what like one of my childhood dreams was to have millions of people know my name as egotistical as that sound was like have millions of people know my name and my artwork and i succeeded at that so um i guess that's good all right yeah that's a good quite like answer so what's the future look like looking like for you any plans like what's the moves um no wife yeah, yeah. Or a nice wife. <laughs> this is a wife. He's looking for a wife. He's looking Yo, for a you're wife. You're gonna get so many DMs right now. <laughs> My boy's looking for a girlfriend. He needs a now. high value woman. <laughs> <laughs> no comment. <Yeah. laughs> um. So, okay. So, what about this? This is a little deep too. Are you ever afraid that somebody will like, like that someday this will all go away? Like, do you ever feel like you're an imposter in a sense? Um. No. I mean, if it all goes away. Um, yeah, no, I'm, I'm just so used to like, uh, like the way I grew up in the South Bronx, like in very, very bad conditions. I'm like, I feel like I could, I could go right back to, li- I'm talking about before my grandma's house. My grandma saved me from my mom's house, but I'm just saying like, I'm so used to like that life that I could go right back to my grandma's house and I'll be fine. Like as long as I'm have my sketchbook and my pencil and my paintbrushes and stuff, like I'll be fine. Like, you know. Like, if it all goes away, it's, it's fine. But, I mean, I'm not hoping for that. But I'll survive, you know, like. My boy just needs a sketchbook and a pencil. That's all you and need. And water. And water just to survive. Just to survive. Nah, nah, seriously, though. Like, and a wife. If and I could wife. if I could live without, um, you know, like, things have gone up in the last, like, eight months. But, you know, I was I didn't have it eight months ago. So I'll be fine, you know. And I was still yeah. happy and stuff. Yeah, like, you before this, you, you were fine. Yeah, like, you yeah. were fine. Just had my room, my bed. <laughs> my grandma you don't want to lose this, you know? Yeah. Um, do you have any regrets? Nope. <laughs> Yo. Wow. Yeah, no, I have no regrets because if, if none of the stuff happened that happened, you know, maybe the good things wouldn't have happened. And uh, yeah, I'm I'm glad where I'm at where I'm at right now. So I guess like I can't really ask this question, but mis- is there any mistakes you've learned from? Yeah, probably so many. All oh. the boring seconds in the TikToks and all the boring seconds. <laughs> <laughs> Every second counts. Um, any mistakes? Yeah, I mean, so many. You know, there's so many mistakes. I just I don't can't remember of some right now. Hmm. Like, you know, just dating mistakes. <laughs> mm. <laughs> yeah, that, uh, <laughs> mm. uh. High anyway. value woman. <laughs> <laughs> Craig's trying to hook me up. <laughs> what about you, Craig? You got any mistakes? Mistakes? Yeah. You're talking about life or... Craig don't or make mistakes. Craig, Craig don't, don't miss. miss. Craig don't miss. Or like regrets. Yeah. In art? Anything. It's a very open-ended question. He got all the answers to life. 
Sometimes I think about if it was a mistake to be finish my FIT. Oh, to f- shout out to shell, FIT. Bombshell. Play one of those buttons. They're all like positive. Yeah, they're all positive. So I don't. I need to get a bomb one. But anyway, yeah, I don't know Yikes. because I feel like FIT really, as of right now, isn't affecting my career path. I always I thought like that like I could be a tattoo or like why I could have I feel like I could have left and mm. just been like I told you four years. Me. No, I, was that. I was scared. No, I was scared. I love the security yeah. of yeah, going yeah. to school. Yeah, because we went like right after we finished high school, so it's just like we were already we were already in that motion of right. And I, a lot of kids out of art design in our class went straight to FIT, SVA, Pratt. It was like the thing to do. There was no other way to go about it. Um, I learned a lot in FIT. I met yeah. some of the greatest people ever that is going to be around forever. He's saying he regrets meeting you, bro. <laughs> He's like, why did I go to is. FIT? It is what it is. But um, he said he don't need you. <laughs> no, let me stop. Let me chill out. This wouldn't even be happening without Albert. Oh yeah, that's true. But you did inspire me to to start this podcast. That was your purpose. Oh really? Yeah, because it was really Craig that told me to start a podcast to do this, and then oh, I sat on it. Put the hope in you. I sat on it for like a couple months, and then the new. <laughs> <laughs> and then. Tw- <laughs> Damn. <laughs> And then 2021 hit in January, and that's when I was just like, all right, I think it's time. So, yeah. You were saying about college? Uh, <laughs> I'm almost depressed. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, listen. I mean, luckily, I'm blessed that I, I don't have any loans to pay right yeah, now. Your mom that's probably important. wouldn't have let you leave college, though. Probably not. I don't know. No, yeah. you know, I, mean, I think she though. trusts my, my judgment. Mm-hmm. It would have had to been, like, full on, like, extreme confidence in myself but timeline wise i wouldn't have started at east side inc even if i left school yeah i would have had to have been just practicing yeah because you were going through that with them that they were like offering you the job but then like they were just kind of taking a while to answer yeah it took a year after my interview to actually get right right i interviewed in uh junior year of college and then started after graduation so it took a while but I don't know. That's that's one of the things that I think about. I don't regret not having, I mean, having the degree right now because that's great. You have it forever. Am I ever going to use it? I don't know. Mm. It's kind of just like, yeah, I have a degree. I went to college. Well, no, I mean, you're not using it because you already got the career that you you want. You want. But does it even matter? You know what I mean? Like, if you if think you, you could have gotten it without going like to school, of course, tattooing. That's true. Yeah. No. Yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. I think so. You knew that you wanted to tattoo like since high school. Yeah. So I was, I did think that like, why even go to FIT? But I mean, it, to this day, my grandma like wants me to go back to college. Like even right now, and like for me to convince her, like for me to, she, I couldn't convince her. Emily, my aunt Emily had to help me like convince her. Like, oh, he's gonna be fine. Like, I yeah, in like him. that's a thing that's I feel like that affected a lot of our decisions is because all our, at least for my parents, they came to the United States for the kids to go to college and get that degree and everything. So I feel like there's, a, there's a weight to that. Like the family, th- like the family aspect of it. Like they, they had all these sacrifices for you to come here and, and get that degree. No. Yeah, totally. So like I was the first yeah. person in my family, I think ever for and generations. They to didn't have, have a degree. the internet growing up. So they don't even know the, the beast of the internet. That yeah. And I mean, like we grew up with, while yeah. it was developing like we grew like we grew up where it was just starting out and like phones we were in the generation of like flip phones i think even before that you know like stuff like that <laughs> yeah yeah no, yeah house and then, phones and then now we got nobody has a house phone that they use everybody has their own like cell phone that's like basically a computer now that when we were born was never like a thing and yeah, you can just like kind of make a career out of just from your phone, which TikTok, you, you did. I think yeah. what we were learning is becoming obsolete. Yeah. Slowly. Yeah. I feel like when we become like parents or something, like we're, we're going to be much more lenient on that sense. If like our kids want to 
have a career other than go to college. Yeah, I'm going to tell yeah. my kids, like, you want to be a TikToker? Go Man, ahead. Man, your, your <laughs> kids don't even have to work. For, <laughs> like, <laughs> if he's going to be that kind of dad. Yeah, like, my boys, they're going to be fine. But, um, yeah, no, I think, like, the family aspect really affects a my lot of... My kids are going to go to work. <laughs> a lot of decisions when you're, like, going out of high school because I personally think going into college at 18 is way too young because you got to... Think of it this way. You have to know what you want to do for the rest of your life at 18 and choose the college that's going to get you there. And spend mad money that you don't have. All this money that you don't have, be like stuck with huge amount of debt with like these big companies with huge interest rates. And then you you realize like five years later, like, oh, I don't want to do this, but you still got to pay the money. You know, I feel like college should should be something that should be thought of like years later and not like be rushed into yeah you know? student loans are like the only loans that you can't get forgiveness for it's crazy oh, well biden said something about relieving some of that so papa we'll see. biden papa biden um but yeah you know thankfully like my i was grateful with my my dad helping me like pay pay out of pocket with school and everything and then i was helping with other other bills in that sense and i i left without any debt also because it's a state school and fit didn't end up being like crazy amount of money but yeah other people aren't aren't that lucky you know and they're stuck with all this debt and then still don't know what they want to do or or hate where they ended up dude like how many people we know we graduated with yeah are Uh even posting art right now yeah after they have the three percent yeah, Two. I always say that to people, like, if I had to pay that much in, like, like the art school, like, the tuition that the art schools charge, like, you know, I always think, like, damn, this should be, like, a guaranteed success right after, like, to pay Yeah, it like, guaranteed, should, right? It should be. Yeah, like, put you in a job right out of college kind of thing, but... where well, you could pay that back in, like, a year or two. They should I have mean, who knows? An, a major, or just illustration, revamped for the modern world and social media. Well, what we're forgetting is that... Uh, fine art is like on the top 10 list of worst majors according to like how much income you get uh, in the future like fine art is like one of the worst That's majors the to be life. in Not, worst by uh, probably the best by like fulfillment and happiness but worse by um, income by income and like yeah like paying that debt back like on a art um, on an art degree you know I mean Unless you go into like teaching and stuff, but well, Devon took a course that I missed out on because of bad communication on my part at the Art Students League about like Instagram, no artists for Instagram, something like that, right? Like yeah. how to market yourself on. I think that's invaluable. We didn't learn a single thing about using social media in college. Yeah, yeah. No, it was just like, create your own website. Uh, yeah, create your own website, and then the business class was not even like a full class. It was like half a semester. And it was a lawyer that wasn't an artist. A lawyer that wasn't an artist. And I feel like that should have been like two like this yeah, two years like of your your bachelor's. You should have had business. It should have classes. been business in every year. And yeah. it, I feel like it should have been somebody that's like directly in it. Like not like some Yeah. Like I mean, but lawyer. no, there were yeah. like there were professors that were still working. I mean but obviously there was other ones that, you know, they were just teaching and said that they had career and doing yeah but i things. feel like they teach con- concepts that are like business concepts but aren't like directly like in that class that instagram class like i learned things that like apply directly to what i'm doing day by day and um like what just um sorry you have to edit that out. <laughs> <laughs> my boy loves the edits i was yeah. getting some errors here but i still have the audio from this so we're still good okay yeah um like what? Uh, What's the Instagram? Yeah, like what? Tip. Yeah, the tips that you were getting in that class that you're still applying to today. Like one simple thing that. Uh, so, a- as artists, like we just we're so used to drawing, and so whenever we make a post of what we draw, like we usually like just post the sketchbook, like just post the drawing, and just assume like especially with somebody that does like hyper realistic art or like like just realistic art, people would like swipe by just thinking that it's a regular photograph and like maybe they'll like you like oh it's a cool photo but you have to actually show that it's a drawing so for like mainstream people to realize yeah like that's one thing i learned like show like your hand on the pen to give Mm. 
for an example. There you Show go. your hand on holding the pen or the pencil with the sketchbook, and like that tells like a normal person that doesn't draw, like oh he he go drew that, mic. and like they look extra close. You get extra like you get more engagement like that, and then or like something like, let's say you're drawing somebody from life, you show the drawing and then you show the model in the background so people could, because social media is such a like short attention span thing that it's just people swiping so people are only going to spend like two seconds on your post that's a lot yeah so when you do things like that and you catch their eye they spend more time on your post maybe they spend five seconds on your post and that five seconds multiplied by all the people that watch that post tells instagram oh he's keeping people on our app now um he's helping us now we could serve those people more as making us more money we're going to push him to more people gotcha. because and then the algorithm pushes you or just with any social media like that's like the basic concept of any social media the people that go viral on youtube is because if they have a five minute video and people watch a lot of the video like a big chunk of people watch a lot of the video they get pushed on like the the suggested on the youtube um, right. section anyway so little things like that like that class i think probably led me because i didn't think about it until they taught me and i was like oh wow that is cool to like show the drawing with your hand and then show the model behind you so you know that i think that inspired me for tiktok like how could i show that i drew the person right there um and like that like led to me making that whole video format of going down to the sketchbook doing the whole thing and, and all speaking that. of that did you ever get caught when you like flip the thing and, and like record somebody do you ever feel like like afraid that they're gonna look um, up and they, they have a, yeah. a phone in front of them <laughs> yeah. um yeah but i mean i it's just you've you know. managed to do it so yeah yeah it's just whatever you gotta do for real all right so oh i mean we pretty much covered this section too where it was like advice and that was like we we just went a whole down a whole rabbit hole about college and stuff um but if there's anything we've missed, what's like the best piece of advice that you've ever received? Um, just you know the cliche advice of doing doing what you love, do what you what you're passionate about. Because like I said, like um, if you need to like force yourself to do chores every day, like all right, I need to do like two hours of drawing every single day, and you don't love it, like let's say you're inspired by me, like oh he made it by drawing, maybe I could do that because Devon like seems um. Like, if he could do it, I could do it, you know? Like, he comes from that background, like, anybody yeah. can. Which, if you don't love it, you know, it's going to be, like, a chore for you. And so, for you to get that two hours done of drawing every day is going to be, like, drudgery. And you're not going to want to do it. And you're going to quit no matter what. Like, eventually, you're going to quit. But when you love it, like, you just end up putting way more hours in. And then, you know, you just become better. And just like anybody that's that's the best at anything is because they loved it. It's not because, like, they yeah. were, you know, because, I mean... We all hate those cliche advice, but they honestly, they're cliche because they've worked for people. So, yeah. Yeah, it's true. I mean, I feel like if it's in your nature, no one has to tell you to do it. Nobody has exactly. to tell you to sit down and play video games. No one has to tell you to sit down and watch Netflix. I feel like if it's something you enjoy and you find a way to make money off of that, you're going to do it. That's the golden. Yeah. Yeah. It's like those, those, those game streamers that are really good at talking and they're funny and they have a nice personality and then they're also really good at games like word word that, that's not even like a job to them there's so much fun and like people love them and they just gaming great. and people's giving them money movie that's review crazy. guys i mean yeah that's yeah that's like another whole thing like youtube is like a whole other thing man you can make videos about anything now um but yeah what about you any ad, like advice that you still live by that someone told you um, I feel like you just got to do it. Whatever that Nike. thing is, you just, you just do it. Like I'm talking to a friend right now and, um, he's venting about struggling that he wants to draw, but he, he always gets blocked or he spends too much time, uh, on Instagram looking at other artists and he just can't start himself. And right. I was like, dude, you don't have, it's not a passion for you and you're really forcing it. Because you wouldn't have to think about it. Even if you like, you know, like that character, just do a five-minute sketch or take a yeah. minute, take five minutes out of your day to do 30-second figure drawings. Like, just do it. You know what I mean? And you just yeah. get better. And if you do it and you don't like it and you keep it up, it's like, all right, this isn't for me. And you got to find something else, you know? That's true. Yeah, it's like those, 
when people say uh, like you can learn anything, like you can learn anything as long as you put in the time. And then some people say like not, like no, it's either you have it or you don't. It's not that you have it or you don't. You still have to put in the time in, but it's like you either have the passion for it or you don't, and it's you're not gonna make it. So. I guess it's, it's like Devon trying tattooing. Yeah. Like he did it. He was incredible at it. And it, he found out it wasn't for him, but he had to do it. And he exactly. stuck with it for a while and did a lot of people yeah. and realized, you know, he was going to go back to painting. And I think that's what people have to do. Just got to try. Yeah. And, and I feel like art is such, it's such a forgiving medium because people think that we just were born with this talent, but they don't see like the time and like money that we spend in working on this craft. And I feel like anybody could become an artist as long as they commit. And it's really comes down to then discipline. And like you guys said, it's passion as well. Uh, yeah, no, that just reminds me. I remember I was having this conversation with my brother. Um, he told me, cause as a kid it's so funny, like as a kid, like I used to always tell him that I'm going to make it. And like, um, now that, my family thinks that I made it, quote unquote. Yeah. Like I tell my brother, like I told you, bro. Remember all those times I told you I was gonna make it. I told you, like I used to always, even as like a seven year old, eight year old, like I'm like, bro, I'm gonna make it. Like, um, I used to joke around with him, like, look, I'm I'm practicing my signatures, Chris, like for when I'm famous and stuff. But anyway, um, I remember he was like, oh, I told him the other day, like, yo, I told you, bro. And then he was like, he's like, nah, I knew. I knew you were gonna make it. And I'm like, no, you didn't. You never told me that. He's like, not. He, I was like, he's like, I knew when when you were 18. I remember one time, he was gonna buy me a TV, and he was like, you know what, Devon, you have two options. You could get this um, $300 TV, or you get $300 in art supplies. Which do you want? And I was like, oh, get the art supplies. And he was like, what? And he was <laughs> to this day he's surprised. I'm like, because I just don't watch TV like that. Like, you know, I'm like always on my phone. Like, if I need to watch something or be entertained. Bro, well, come on. Oh, yeah. You need a big screen you know, to watch the movies or I something, know. man. Come on. I, <laughs> I know. Yeah. I'm, I'm getting one soon just because of Craig and him and, like, all the Yo, other Craig people. is the advocate for that OLED. He's probably going to make you buy that OLED. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm, I, I will. <laughs> I will. Um, yeah. No, I am. Just because when people show up, they're like, yo, you're so fucking weird. Like, <laughs> TV, like, are you human? I'm like, all right, I'll get the TV. Just, just for them. But, uh, um, I forgot what No, I yeah, I mean, we were talking about, like, your brother and then you choosing the art supplies over the TV. His brother pranked me once. What do you mean? Do Want we talk about it? Huh? I don't even know. It depends on what it was. <laughs> do tell. Do tell. I'm interested it? now. Wait, wait, I'm scared. What, um, was, it? Nah, nah. what was it about? So, that Batman painting... Okay. Okay. We were in high school when I did it. It was an acrylic, uh, Dark Knight painting of Christian Bale, and um, you know I finished. I was pretty proud of it because I don't like painting. I don't like color, uh, so I posted it on Facebook and all that. And then I get a call from someone. I don't know who the number is. <laughs> and uh, I really don't remember this story he, at all. <laughs> I, I forget the specifics. I just know the gist of it. But the dude was basically like. He was like, uh, he was like, your painting, your Batman painting, is so beautiful. I'm, I want, I want to buy it. My brother? Yeah. When? And I was like, oh, for real? And he was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then it went to this whole thing, and then I just got ghosted. And my I, brother? Oh, yeah, my brother. Yes. <laughs> That's horrible. Yo, how do you even get your number? Through the, I'm, Devon, you get it. Had it had to have him. been Devon. Yeah. Gotta edit this out. <laughs> no, no, no. Wait, wait, how? This is staying on. You're the one that told me it was him. Yeah. But it was such a small, like, goofy thing. I don't remember this at all. Playing my boy. Listen, and then and then his happened, brother came to the gallery and made fun of my mustache. If this happened, <laughs> oh my god. If this happened, um, I was not in on that. I would never But how he but how he get the number, Devon? I don't know. <laughs> like, I have no idea. Like that's so like crushing to an artist <laughs> i don't even remember that story at all oh my gosh you know what i'll buy that painting you still have it i'm gonna buy it now. i don't know where that painting is that's at. a pity buy ladies and gentlemen <laughs> <laughs> yeah is, are there any paintings that you, you ever like does it bail on christian bale batman never mind never mind <laughs> that was gonna be funnier um paintings that i bail on yeah like you work on it and then you're just like it's not working and then you just like kind of just toss no. It. I really, I'm really like try to so so oh, edit this out too. No, don't set no, I'm not. <laughs> I don't Shout edit. Out to you, All right, I try to set myself up f 
for success in the painting so like i'll make sure like my reference is perfect and this is perfect before i even start it and then i have like the same process every time so i don't usually like quit on a painting um what about no. you craig um you those experiences there's a lot of things that i i have a lot of things that i didn't yeah. post um a lot of drawings that just have a sketch and it's like halfway done i just never went back to uh there are things that i finished and i was like this looks kind of weird and then i just never post it um but yeah it happens it happens i have this 24 by 36 portrait of my brother that i never finished still haunting me in my room Ooh. Oh yeah, I see it sometimes in the FaceTimes. There's like a little head in the background that's, that's yeah, there. Like, it looks like someone's there. Literally it's like, haunting you. Yeah, it's like behind a cabinet and everything. I it's took like that a... picture back in <laughs> college. From he college? He has a basketball. Yeah, from college. Yeah, he has a basketball. It's like doesn't even look like my brother anymore because he's grown so much. <laughs> yeah, he just posted a shirtless pics. Oh, don't even remind me. He made me take those pictures. <laughs> yeah. He give you credit? No. Dang. Dang. No, I think he did. No, he tagged me. He tagged me. But, um, all right, we have sidetracked like crazy. Um, so we are off the rails. Off the rails. Millions. Millions. <laughs> Millions. <laughs> Billions. This Bernie such Madoff. A <laughs> such a stupid joke. Charles Ponzi. <laughs> Yo. So, what kind of movies have you been watching during this whole pandemic? I'll go to Craig first. I haven't been watching any movies. He watches YouTube. Right, because he doesn't have a TV. He watches TikTok. I watch TikTok. TikTok, TikTok. is very how, entertaining. But that's I mean, a, how long do you stay on TikTok? Yeah, like, that's a... Isn't that like Craig, a, he hears like the just songs browsing. all the time when I'm browsing. He's like... <laughs> do, 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 he like... Okay, so Devon... Sheesh! <laughs> <laughs> my boy's peeking. Sheesh. My audience. We're peeking. Okay. Sheesh! So Devon doesn't discriminate discriminate against music anymore because he knows every single like trending TikTok song and humming it. Yeah, I'll be swiping and like singing it. He's like, my boy knows all the songs. So I guess Devon's main form of entertainment is social media. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Right. TikTok, Instagram, YouTube. Yeah. What's your favorite movie of all time? So, my favorite movie is Good Will Hunting. My boy needs to get closer to the mic. Retainer. Retainer. Ben Affleck. It's not your fault. Okay. Yeah, it's probably Good Will Hunting. Why? Oh, my boy asked the why. There <laughs> you I told him before the podcast not to ask that question. All right, so the reason why... <laughs> so, so, the reason why I love that... that I was going to say that painting. So, this guy... <laughs> I'm all over Always the place. Always on the art. I'm shook. Um, <laughs> yo, my painting. boy love my I'm joke. I'm moving painting. <laughs> so, so I love that movie ever since I was like 13 or 14. When I first watched it, it's about like this genius guy that was like a genius mathematician who was abused as a kid. And since I always wanted to make it in life, I used to think like, I was abused too. Like, I'm going to become a genius. Like, he was so like brilliant with like math and stuff. Anyway, so... Boom, bitch. Oh, that's from the um, childhood. <laughs> Tick three. Oh. You have a childhood counter in the bottom. Yeah, <laughs> Tick three. <laughs> you know, like the, the meme with the red button, like Devon be like, my childhood. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, a genius childhood. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, right, you know. Craig, all right, I'm Craig, gonna sir. need you to sub in because yeah, I'm I'm struggling. Well, let's talk about Goodwill Hunting a little bit. All right. Have you seen it, Albert? Yeah. It's been years since I've watched it, but I know it's like Matt Damon. Matt yeah. Damon with Robin Williams. Robin yeah. Williams, yeah. Ben yeah. Affleck. I yeah. I think they were nobodies before this Mini movie. Mini Driver. Who you know? Her? Oh Mini yeah, Driver. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, they wrote the movie together. Wait, what? Matt Damon and Ben Affleck. Oh, they won shoot. Oscars for it. They were very, very young. Excellent movie. Oh. Um, they somehow got Robin Williams involved. Obviously, they got some great producers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but it was like their first big movie. And it's awesome. I remember Devon sharing that. That was his favorite movie. So naturally, I had to watch it back in high school. Yeah. Oh, that was your first time watching it? Yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah, That's yeah. Um, it was great. I loved it. It was something... When you find out that they wrote it, do you like oh. kind of go like on a whole thing where you you look up the movie and like f find videos about 
the movie after no, you watch it? No, not really. Or? I feel like it probably popped up later on. Um, oh, because sometimes Matt Damon and Ben Affleck do a lot of like cool charity work where they get students and they produce their films and everything. And I think that might have led to me finding out that they've always been really close buddies mm. and about supporting young artists because they were once at that point as well. Um, but it's a great movie. Highly recommend Good Will Hunting. Yeah. yeah. How'd you learn all this? Like this organized thing like with the screen and, and this and all that? Oh, I mean, it's, I mean, that is just... I'm like super into tech and stuff, so I just kind of mm-hmm. learn as I go. And then I started just outlining yeah. because of the podcast. What about like all the sound stuff? Like how'd you learn that? That stuff? It looks so complicated. YouTube. This is passion. Yeah. Just, wow. Teaching lessons here. <laughs> wow. I mean, like with me, I mean, that's why I was asking you if you have any other like interests or hobbies, because with me, I'm always finding something new that I like, I like to explore. Like art, obviously, is going to be always the main thing. But recently, I've been getting into doing a lot of video work, video editing. Um, and then I, I started doing um, photography. I've always done photography ever since high school, but... I've never really had, um, I couldn't find an avenue where I was like happy with up until I started doing like street photography. Yeah. So that's kind of like how you started with like subway and like doing all your subjects with the subway. I've kind of been doing that now, like walking the streets of New York and trying to capture the world of New York, like the environment of New York city, the people and everything. And that's just like something I like to do when art like when I'm kind of exhausted or just I'm blocked out by art and can't really figure out what to do next, I'll just do that or I'll look up what else, what other things I'm interested in, like video editing. And then now I'm doing videos. I a commercial is gonna come out, hopefully after this video airs. Of like you know just things I I want to learn. I want to be like very versatile, like learning different things. Like I, I'm I'm always constantly trying to learn something new i'm never really satisfied with the knowledge that i currently have yeah so can you put us in the commercial can i put this in the commercial or i'm thinking of actually putting the commercial in front of this oh so they saw it they might have seen it they might have seen it so let me put the commercial oh in front of it in front of this like instead of like an intro or something because i don't know i gotta do an intro for you i might not who knows okay um but yeah it's just you know, I feel like you shouldn't sell yourself short and just focus on one thing. I feel like if you still have other interests, explore those because you never know what... Because they all end up blending together. Like, this is a podcast, but it's blending into my own website. It's merging all that together. I get to talk to people that I'm interested in, learn more about different avenues of of like creativity because I want to talk to also photographers and stuff, you know? So all everything that I've been doing, it all just kind of blends together, and I think that's a way to you know learn new things. If if it all works together, then I say go for it. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. You like bars, video editing, and stuff. You should uh, start incorporating that. <laughs> <laughs> Millions. Millions. Yeah, no, I just do Bonzi. the basics. Like, I just do whatever works for now. Yeah, so well, you're not like a day. you're not like a movie guy. You're like just watching documentaries and stuff. Yeah. Why? Uh-huh. I'm boring. He's a realist. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean I watch. Do you know? <laughs> yeah, like you're I not watch... into like Marvel or anything. Well, like let's that. see, Devon. We we went to see Ant Man. <laughs> right, that's one. We saw Joker. Yeah. That's a big one. Um. We saw jo- so you. How many times did you go see? Joker? I think I saw it three times. Oh my gosh, my boy like, likes depression. Um, oh, Joker was beast with the squad yeah. with Devon and mm-hmm. Dom, and then with the lovey Miss Abigail Simpkins. Love. Wow. Let's talk about Abby. No. What do you want to know? Oh, you're ready. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's real love. That's real love. I said no because I didn't think you were gonna. But if you wanna, have I respect have you, it. You met her yet? Yeah. No. Okay. I haven't. I haven't met her yet. Wait, really? He's yeah. a busy guy. She's far. No, it's because she's far. It's not because I'm busy. She... Try to blame me. Say, <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> so how dare you? How dare you? Yeah, I'll meet her soon. Yeah, at the wedding. Mm. Spoilers. Spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. 
All right. Well, I think we've reached a point where we're all satisfied and run out of things to talk about. I'm not about. satisfied. You're not satisfied. Not satisfied. What do you want to talk about? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, thinking. what's it what's it like being in a relationship with a fellow creative? This is for Albert. Ooh. No, of course heavy. I'm single so <laughs> I'm not I mean, fellow creatives. You were dating one at one point, but I don't know if you want to get into that. Um I'm satisfied. <laughs> Are you satisfied? Um, you know, in the beginning, I thought it was gonna like be a very competitive kind of thing, because you know, you're both trying to reach, like, I I don't I'm not saying like be famous or anything, but when you're in college and they're telling you that only what was it like ten percent, eight percent of people, one percent, <laughs> one yikes. one percent of illustrators is gonna make it in 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 a career of freelancing and everything. So th- the whole time I thought it was going to be a whole competitive thing, mm. but, but you realize that there's so many different avenues of creativity that you end up just Damn. working together. Me, you, Craig and Gabby are in the 1%. Wow. wow. That's 400 people. Huh? huh? <laughs> yeah, we both, you just, we both just like blanked out, like, huh? So one out of every hundred makes it, right? So that means uh, the four of us okay, 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 out of okay. 400, a oh, pool of okay. 400. Gotcha. And Mike, well, I guess that's not illustrators. Which... No, Mike Mike made it. I no, mean, he, no, he, we, he yeah. made it. I'm saying like... Specifically said... for our class, they would say only 1% of you. For illustrators or for art in general? I would say I, art I in general. I say art in general. Oh, okay, yeah. no, I'm saying Mike made it. Shout yeah. out to Mike Evangelista. Mike Evangelista, episode uh, three. Oh, you don't remember. Wow. He's done too Mike. many. He's done too many. I'm sorry, Mike, but you know I'll link it here. Everybody could watch that. But um, yeah, no, it's um when you realize that you could still make it in different avenues of art, you just end up working together. Avenues. Like, yeah. So like she, Gabby, my girlfriend, does um print design. So she's working with a company. She right out of college. She, she had an internship during school and they hired her like two months later and she's been working there ever since killing it and um you know she she's learned a lot through there she teaches me things that i never figured out with like what she does and like what the workflow of that is and then i'm more right now still developing and then doing freelance work and stuff and you know we just go back and forth we help each other with our own sketch sketches and everything and we show each schedule no and we show each other like our own work and you know it's just like a whole positive mindset i mean that's what our friend group is has always been you know we we don't let each other like put out terrible work you know we Mm -hmm. always give each other that that critique that that honest critique without being hurtful so it's that's just really what what dating a creator is like it's just you're all both doing your own thing, but you you can always come back together and give your two cents and create awesome work. I've been meaning to uh, collab with her eventually, but we're all kind of busy at the moment. Right, right. Yeah. Well, I guess, yeah, you're a team. So you yeah, need, yeah, you need exactly. both of you to make it. Yeah, yeah. So. A team, yeah. So it's fun. I will say that it's, it's good because, I mean, what's it like not dating a, a creative? I feel like Um, there's some things that you can't really talk to her about. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's times that I go on, on like, a tangent talking about, like, Drew Struzan and all of his stuff. And um, I realized that I have to explain it differently to someone that doesn't know the art world as well as I do. So it's, it's super interesting because almost as if when I ask her for advice on a drawing... She'll see things as how the general public's gonna see it, yeah. And that's Couldn't super that grateful, yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah, so I'll do a drawing, and I'll be like, "Should I stop it here and fade it out, or should I bring it to the edge?" If I was working on a commission or something, and she'll be like, "Oh, bring it to the edge. It looks too weird." <laughs> and to me, I'm like, "Yo, this looks kind of cool as it fades, though." But I'm like, "All right, but it's for someone that isn't an artist, so maybe I'm overthinking it, and putting too much of my flair in it." Gotcha. And then they end up loving it. You know what I mean? So it's like things like that. You get that that other perspective, which I really like. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's benefits in both then, I guess. Yeah, I feel like sometimes as an artist, you're like way too deep into the work. Oh, yeah. You're like stuck in there for hours looking at it. And you're just like, is this yeah. okay? Is this fine? And then someone comes and tells you, nah, bro, that eye is off. Yeah. Oh, man. That just reminds me of the piece of 
I've been working with you without like saying anything. Oh man. Anyway, I have like this one client that commissioned me for two pieces and um it's to the point where they're nitpicking little things and editing my own stuff. Like my own artwork, sending it back to me. And drawing and on top of his stuff. And it's yeah, worse. The, the client? Yeah. His that's is that's like, a non-artist? I don't know if he's an artist or not. But he's just yeah. sending me the back and forth. But yeah. That's whoever insane. it is, is like giving the advice that's just horrible. Like he's cha- saying to change this, change that. Yeah. You, you and have it's to totally like, off you have from to like, the reference. You have to like try to find what they really mean. Yeah. Because they don't know how to show what they Which mean. Which is like a great practice. I mean... Other than that, though, he was very helpful in the beginning because I, d- I did <laughs> send, I did send. Hopefully, he doesn't watch this. Does he follow you? He does on Instagram. He so. probably won't watch this all the way to the end. Probably not. But I mean, it's not. It's not like I'm saying anything bad. I'm just saying like he was very helpful in the beginning with the art direction because the first two portraits I I sent him were bad. They were. They did not look like the two people I was commissioned for. And I saw it at when, after I sent it, and, you know, I was like, all right, that's fine. So I redid the portraits. Second time around, one of them approved instantly. But then just this one portrait that I thought I nailed, I was going back and forth with Craig, checking the anatomy and everything, making sure it was solid. I thought it was said and done, and still, it was back and forth with that until recently I, I just told him, like, no, it's good. I'm not. I don't think th- there's much more I can and do. You accepted it. I haven't gotten an email back. Oh. So. Listen, you live and learn, man. Yeah, you know what yeah, you yeah. can and can't take, and you got to draw the line somewhere. No pun intended. Yeah, because <laughs> on top of that, I was I wasn't make like you know like I was doing it more for just because it was a passion project for me. Portfolio. And, yeah, like a portfolio piece and like a credit to my like website and everything like put that put them on there but like you you charge for changes and i wasn't charging for the changes or anything so it was just like all right how much is my time worth for this at this point you you could be working on so many other things yeah again i still appreciate the opportunity with doing that it was an amazing time and i mean i hope it still gets in but we'll see other than that pre-order my two books that one that me me and craig are in uh, underexposed it's on my website mm. and then i have another one coming out halloween where i did a poster for the movie halloween among other artists that's coming out in october it's you can get pre-ordered should have said all this in the beginning for a second like. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, listen you know, the maybe to get to this point <laughs> maybe your haters are gonna love it so we'll see yeah um yeah so you know live and learn that's the main thing as an artist and life for real i think you gotta learn to say no sometimes yeah and that's hard when you're beginning have you ever had to say no in the beginning to what to just like commissions that you're just like a project yeah like turn down the project Mm -hmm. yeah 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 i mean now i have to like always i mean yeah well before when you were like all right I i really need to do this work but this guy is not with it like you know like a situation where you know you you, sh- you could have had that money, but yeah, one with actually Craig was helping me. Like, what were we helping? Remember the the family in the Upper East Side with the baby? Oh yeah, yeah. What were we helping me doing? Like, take the pictures, um, or, like, put the lighting. Yeah, definitely the whole ref taking process. That yeah, was, that was so, when you like rented out that like, expensive ass light, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. That was another one, dude. We've been on. Oh, that was a different one. Well, I rented a light for that one too. Anyway, um, mm. there was this couple from the Upper East Side. They had a baby. I had to shoot their portrait, just shoot a reference so I could paint it. It's for the non-artists listening. Yeah, yeah. Um, anyway, and then um, I, I don't know. I, all my clients, like all of them, other than him, like always accepted the portrait. Like, oh my god, it's beautiful. It's amazing, and always. But he was the only one that wanted like. He wanted a change, and I'll do the change. Then he'll see another change. Then he wants that change. Then he'll see something else and wanted that change. Then he saw something else, and then it was just too much back and forth. And, were you uh, charging for the changes, or were it was just kind of included in the pricing? Um, I was like happy that I could make a living making art, and I was like not charging for the. I was like way younger and stuff. Mm-hmm. Now my manager Logan, like she takes care. She's like he's not touching that thing unless you pay him <laughs> more. Like she's. I yeah, that's her. amazing. Yeah, no, I don't have to deal with that now. Um, but um, 
Yeah, so I, I didn't charge for the changes. But I think he noticed, like, I mean, I was being way too nice. I think his wife noticed, like, how um, ridiculous he was being, so. She helped you on that sense? Yeah, th- and then he was just like, you know what, we'll, we'll just take it, we love it. And, um, yeah, no, they, they took it, Um, they, they have it framed in their home. Is, yeah. But I think he was very, like, nitpicky, like, he's yeah. extra, like. I mean, no, there's always going to be that kind of person, so. Can we get into, <laughs> like, how you handle your money? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> nah, that's Be- too much. <laughs> no, like, not obviously no, not talk about numbers, but, like, what not to do kind of thing. Because I feel like that's such a, as a freelancer especially, like, you don't, in the beginning, like, I, they didn't teach us this in, in school either. They just told us, like, oh, you know, you got to make yourself an LLC or whatever and then, you know, deal with taxes. But they never taught us how to figure out, like, what to do with taxes and, and whatnot. So now that you're making money as a freelancer, you're do- making money with your art. What's something that, you know, that you could, te- like, show, like, give advice on that sense, like, what people should be doing? Um, I don't know. I'm not good with that, Craig. Take over. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. My boy famous and doesn't know how to handle money. <laughs> I know a lot about Devon. <laughs> yeah. um, I feel like you're his parent. Looking, <laughs> you're my parent. Looking at Devon's bank account. <laughs> um, he is pretty good with having only a certain amount he uses as his spending money okay and using the rest of it almost as if he doesn't have it and uses Mm. that in ways to turn that into something profitable for him yeah yeah okay so one advice there's only advice i'm giving is uh just like um most of like most of my money i keep it like in my business and then i pay myself a salary um, well, that's not everything that I make, you know, like, how don't you get carried away? Like I'm worth this much. I can, <laughs> because I'm so used to making like way less. See, I don't even want to talk about like, Hey, whoa, like, whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. <laughs> whoa. <laughs> Let me get this out of the way for real. Um, okay. So yeah, not talking about money, but you give yourself a salary and it's, it's yeah. like, don't spend all okay anyway i'll tell him for him yeah, yeah don't yeah, spend all the money that you receive from like the commission because that's not all your money you got to realize that because it's your own business you got to charge yourself the tax yeah there's tax yeah. there's like our supplies there's all that kind of stuff you gotta your rent all, yeah everything so yeah i just pay myself a certain salary that it's not everything that i make but now you have an accountant who helped you through all that yeah yeah he helped. so like what did he help you with if you can talk about it every time you get paid separate your tax money just so that you have a whole different account for that do you calculate that or yourself and like you handle all that like how um, much the what the percentage is there a certain percentage like, uh, yeah yeah um like 10 percent. i think it's like 30 30 percent. i think that's what you gotta put aside Ooh, uh. at least at my level. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, we're gonna peak with all these laughing. Yes. <laughs> I gotta lower it. Devon's in the one percent. <laughs> <laughs> he gets taxed more. Um, right. So yeah, okay, so you have your own percentage, but just leave a certain percentage for your taxes and then a little bit for your own spending. Just like having separate yeah. savings accounts, like one like for taxes, one for income tax, one for your life savings, ones for um, investments if you do that, ones for, um, what's the other one for? <laughs> My boy don't even know where his money's at. Uh, there was another one. Just the savings? Oh, uh-huh. sales tax. Right. And, uh, and then. Um, yeah, yeah, and then so it's just. In. And then having a personal bank account, and then you pay yourself every, like, two weeks. So I have a. Yeah, when you're a freelancer, you know, your accountant has to be your best friend because he's, you know, they got to do all that money management. Oh, yeah, so that, that's what I was going to say. Like, mm-hmm. as soon as you get paid, you split it up into your 
Yeah, into all the different accounts. Yeah. And then make sure, because I learned from him, from Craig, to uh, save all the uh, receipts that you, that you spend on, like, your own business art expenses. supply. Yeah, like, business expenses. Like, you can pretty much write off anything like, as long as you're using it to create what makes you money. Yeah. So, that's another good advice without getting too deep into it. Yeah, it's important. It's yeah, yeah. It's really important. Economy 101 <laughs> for the artist. We yeah, no, isn't that. it crazy how you don't learn any of that in school? No, yeah, it's they crazy. don't teach you, It's bro. crazy. They should have a whole class on that. If, oh, if, they did, if but like for half a year. Classes, you had, like they should definitely add that uh, and, and social media. Every year. I feel like financial literacy is the most important thing. and they, That should be... And I remember even in, in high school, I had like half a semester of economics and then the other half was like government. But that was the only time I ever learned about, you know, financial same. stuff. We had the same thing. And it was just like, well, that was such a waste. It should be something that's like a, like a necessary course every year. That you, you should, should be, be leaving high school knowing about all this stuff. Yeah. And, and here we are, like, learning as we go and YouTube, like, YouTubing everything, you know. I YouTube finance stuff. Yeah. yeah. So do I. Yeah, no, I'm glad YouTube exists. You can learn anything now. You just got to be... Yeah. If anything, last year just taught me that saving is so mu- important, you know, because mm-hmm. I was at in a way, I was like in in like a way I was just spending all my money kind of thing, and like you know saving here and there, but not like saving to the point where I'm where where I'm at right now, and like I learned I had to teach myself how to invest and like you know learn all all that kind of avenues and everything, you know you got to invest in Doug. You know, because Elon Musk told us to. Oh, Doge. Doge. I call it. <laughs> I, I, I call it Doug. Anyway. It's a cartoon. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So like learning to do all that kind of stuff on your own, and you know, learning as you go, man. I think this is such an important thing that the the school system is failing everybody on. Damn, it got real deep towards the end, huh? Yeah. 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 I'm like thinking about everything. <laughs> yeah, I think we uh covered everything huh it's crazy how craig said he's not satisfied we went a whole hour <laughs> yo right that's what i'm saying i'm not satisfied uh, <laughs> well, you, no. then nobody's gonna listen to like this whole <laughs> part so all right so thank you for being on the podcast yeah, no, thank you. This, uh, was this was fun. amazing this was fun yeah, no, this was thank great. you craig for helping out with it and keeping it all light and fun um, <laughs> millions <laughs> millions millions so to everybody uh, if you haven't noticed we're wearing merch for the, the podcast we got um, printed shirts we got embroidered shirts and we got hats so get yours today when this comes out and enjoy because it's a way to support the podcast and be like us all right everybody thank you for listening have a great night bye Ha, 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 ha.